Hi, welcome to another episode of Low Noises. I didn't want to say hello, I want to try to change it from the way. Why are you always, on a delay? I don't know. <laughs> because I usually always say hello, and I didn't want to say hello. Okay. So. Well, we've mixed it up now. Welcome like, to Low Noises, is. an alternative music podcast. I'm Badger, here's Gareth. Hi. And here's Paul. Yo. Sick. Always on call to point uh, out your terrible openings, even though I'm not going to do it. <laughs> we are the podcast that does not make you go douche. But there is something we're going to talk about that does make, make you go douche. Douche? It's spelled D-O-O-S-H. <laughs> not the other kind of dish. We're back. We talk uh, every week. I'm really fucking to this one up. So what is going on? Oh, oh no, right. Someone had a few beers last night and they had to go to work today. That's what happened about you. <laughs> I blame Slipknot. <laughs> so, so if you do podcast, we get together every week and we talk about alternative music. Attempt to. Attempt to. <laughs> he would his attempt. Attempt to talk. Uh, Stop that. Uh, so... <laughs> Every week we get to talk about new music. This week we're going to talk about new music from Alexis on Fire. Uh, oh, fuck, we just removed something. And I can't, <laughs> fucking just fucked up. Christ. Uh, Giver. And also a new album from Anti Flag and a new EP from The Hell. Douche. Mm. <laughs> Do uh, we have to look me in the eye and say that every time? Yeah. <laughs> I think it helps. Um, yeah. <laughs> and also, I uh, got a live review of Slipknot because me and Gaffer see Slipknot last night. And also, for a very, very special, awesome treat this week, we have a very awesome, cool interview with an awesome, cool guy from an awesome, cool band. Uh, Sean from We Never Learn to Live was kind enough. You said that, I expected an answer. Sean, all yeah, right. Yeah, Sean, Sean, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. It, yeah. Sean from we, the great post hardcore style band We Never Learn to Live came on and had a chat with Paul. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that will be towards the end of the episode. I will timestamp it if you just want to jump straight to that interview. Uh, if you want to just listen to the interview separately on its own, we'll, at some point it'll exist on YouTube. Whatever. But for now, just stand around, guys. So first, we're gonna, before we get to live music and this awesome interview and everything else, we're going to start with the news as always. So Paul, do, do the news. Now. <laughs> uh, preferably. Okay, I'll do it now. That's fine. Uh, yeah, first piece of news then. Um, we have uh, the first announcements for Outbreak Fest. I mean, really should have said... News makes you a douche. That's how you try and have to fit the word douche in as much as possible. This is fuck. All you right, then. Go on, mate. <laughs> this is go douche. Happy? <laughs> no, never happy. I Life know. is miserable. Go uh, on. We do live in Manchester. Um, yeah, so Outbreak Fest. They've announced the first set of bands. Um, pretty tasty. Tasty. Yes. Um, so, headline band uh, for the first. Well, don't know what day this is, but first headline is Not Loose. Oh, I. Oh, I. They've done all right there, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a pretty good fucking headliner, mate. Yeah. He was, I can't remember who it was this, last year. Uh, I think it was Code Orange. Um, was it Comeback Kid? Comeback Kid were on there somewhere. Code Orange was the year before. Oh, was it? Okay. Comeback Kid were the headliners, I think, last year. Which right, is yeah. Still yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Day and Age, Not Loose is fucking yeah, that's, nice. After their last album, that's a hell of a pull now, isn't it? Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, and then, yeah, so they got uh, them uh, trapped under rice. Uh, T-U-I. Yeah, T-U-I. <laughs> uh, Incendiary, who I am super excited to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, all that war, broken teeth, root of all evil. Uh, right. So, yeah, six bands so far. Um, two days this time. Uh, so this time it's moved over to Sheffield. I think they announced yeah. that a short while ago. Two different venues. Yeah, so it's the Pedal Warehouse on the 26th of June and then mm-hmm. the Lead Mill on the 27th. Weird. There's yeah. some two separate venues. Maybe it's just the, one of them was already booked for that day, so they couldn't get into mm. on both days. They had committed to going to Sheffield yeah. <laughs> on those dates. Yeah. Uh, I'm already going to a family do, I suppose. <laughs> just wing it on the same weekend. Uh, question. Yes. Because, Paul, cause as, as everyone knows, you're the king of hardcore. I'm um, not sure for this. For the, <laughs> for the, the purpose of this the question. Of this question. <laughs> Root of all evil. Mm-hmm. Isn't that, is that just, is that the same as. Uh, Brutality Will Prevail? Or is that just a coincidence that that album was called Root of All Evil? That is a good question. I'm not too sure. Um, I did, because I think this is the band that um, Ash Gray used to be in from Venom Prism. Yes, he has uh, denied that he's been part of this. Yeah, so he's denied that he's nowhere near this uh, gig. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So I don't know what is actually going on with that. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll find out. I'm going to I'm gonna quickly go try and Spotify Root of All Evil. But okay. I'm pretty sure it's just the Brutality with the Bayer record, I'm sure it is. Yeah, or maybe it's just they got the name from that record, who knows? 
Oh, no, there's a I mean, that called. seems more likely. I, I find it... I don't no, know. No, there's a band called... Yeah, I don't understand why you find it so hard to believe there's a band called... Well, they, only, they only put an EP out this year. Oh, okay. I don't think it's the same band. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. I don't know. Maybe I should have researched this myself, instead of relying on you to know the answer. But here we stand. Oh, oh, as you always end up doing, just like panically searching things if it, on your if phone. Google, Google. Is, Google. <laughs> what it, Save me, Google. Normally, I wouldn't have thought about it at all. But before Outbreak did this announcement, they did a, a like a, an image, like going, announcement tomorrow or whatever, and with yeah. a picture of a guy holding a cardboard sign, looking down with his hood up. Same douche. Which is the same, which looks like the album cover for Root of All Evil okay. by Wilbur Brown South Wilbur Fails. So I'm pretty sure it must be something related to it. Must be. Or not. Or not. <laughs> if you're super hardcore, tweet us and let me know. Loud Noises Podcast, Blood, Loud Noises Pod UK. Tweet at me and let me know because I don't fucking know. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Dude. has this lineup convinced you to go or not? Yeah, right. Uh, mm. Is it? <laughs> what it is, is... It's a simple yes or no question. <laughs> Apparently no, not. <laughs> it's... I don't want to sound like an ass. Right, I'm trying to be careful with what I go to this year. Right. I could really only afford one thing. So I'm being I'm still waiting <laughs> for that two thousand threes announcement. <laughs> it's coming next Wednesday, they said. We'll see. Mm. Um This is now got can I remember the last year it cost like thirty quid? Yep. It's now up to seventy quid. Uh yeah, sixty six plus booking. And I can understand that with it being a two day thing. Mm-hmm. I just need a bit more to justify the two nights three nights in a hotel and a 70 quid ticket and all that shit mm-hmm. no that's fair so uh, it, I mean one yeah. day could be one day and it seems to only be the weekend pass there's no day tickets or anything uh, no I've not seen any day tickets for sale yet yeah. but maybe they're just uh, limiting deep to sale to weekends for now yeah or maybe it just is some. weekend only I don't know but currently it is yeah. uh, I mean I don't well I know you're umming and ahhing but I am 100% trying to get, to get a ticket for this uh, as I, I say, it... I really want to see Incendiary. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, not loose after their new album coming out, or knowing the song's a lot better. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, not loose are fucking sick live. Yeah. yeah. They know Traps and Dries are fucking decent. So mm-hmm. if, you, uh, if you have the disposable income to attend this, I would heavily recommend it. I mean, I don't. I'm still going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you don't have the disposable income, but you don't give a shit, then yeah, go <laughs> Uh, cool. Happy? Always. Sick. Next. Deuce. Next. Deuce. Uh, next, Turnstile have announced a one-off show in Berlin. Yes. Of all places. Um, so yeah, so it's Turnstile, Gag, uh, One Step Closer, and Glitterer. Fantastic names. Uh, yeah, so I think this is off the back of that uh, EP they dropped a, a week ago or so. Yeah, it's like a weird remix you... album. Oh, a mm-hmm. remix EP. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about this one. I mean, I've not heard the other bands. I, I think, if I remember correctly, and I'm going to look it up as we speak, <laughs> one of these guys actually did the uh, the remix. No, I did that. I thought it was Gag, but it wasn't. Unless the guy who did the remix is in one of these bands, and he also does the things on the side. Because it's under a completely different name. It's like Gabe or something. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna look, I am looking as we, we, we talk. Yeah. Oh, it's Mal- Malgrab, sorry. No, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> Gabe, so, close. <laughs> so close. So close. Some um, of the letters. But yeah, I mean, I'm hoping this is going to lead to more dates because I yes. really want to see Turnstile live again. Yes. Uh, again, them. we took skipping back to Outbreak, but uh, I think that was the first time I saw them and absolutely floored me. I can't remember when the first time I saw them, but just I saw them twice last year and mm-hmm. just fucking yeah, they were so good. Yeah, Slam Dunk as well last year. Yeah, yeah. It? Yeah, Slam Dunk and yeah. I saw them at Jera. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still yet to see them. <laughs> it just, they're just them live. They're a great energetic live band and like sound great musically and stuff. Just makes you feel fucking great. Right? Yeah. yeah, well that's it's the thing. Such a good high. I, I really want like if they this does turn into tour, I would be very tempted to go to it just to finally get to actually yeah. see it all because the amount of people I know who've never listened to their music and came away from just at a festival or whatever, seeing them live and just go like, well, I'm a fan for life. That <laughs> <Yeah>. was brilliant. <laughs> just need better merch. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping this will lead to like at least one UK show. Yeah. I'll happily go to London for Turnstar. I mean, it'd be nice if you went to somewhere else. The dilemma you're going to have if that does get announced. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I mean, I got nothing it's much. only three months away. Uh, maybe the Guitar until uh, Outbreak Fest and then turn up there. 
<laughs> yeah, I suppose. They've done it before, they'll do it again. Mm. I thought, the thing is, I thought they would have been into the writing new album stage, because um, Time and Space was 2018, mm-hmm. and they did like quite a lot of touring after that, and in 2019, and so on. So I thought, oh, 2020 will be a new album year, but well, then obviously they just dropped this remix thing, so I don't know what that means for that, if it means anything at all. Or I imagine it'd be something fun they did. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Hopefully they'll play UK soon. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> nice. Next. Hardcore Next. Bands. <laughs> uh, more hardcore. Uh, Jesus Peace. Yes. Uh, they have announced uh, two UK dates. Yes. Uh, so they are playing 19th of June uh, in Leeds at Boom and yep. then 20th in London in the new cross in. Does that yeah. mean happy Paul is, is happy? That, <laughs> is, that, is that promoter again? He likes to only put gigs on in Leeds and London. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that hardcore promoter who only knows of two cities in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> it, and two venues. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much oh, yeah. always them too, yeah. It was, he had Have Heart last year. Yeah. And, it, it, and that was at Leeds Stylus, not Boom. If, if fucking Have Heart in Boom would have been fucking ridiculous. <laughs> that would have been insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Jesus Peace are fucking amazing live. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like, on record, they're good, but I can't listen to them on a bunch. Uh, it's weird. Like mm-hmm. I go, yeah, it's a good, but I just don't listen to it a bunch on record. But fucking live, man, Jesus, <laughs> so Peace. good. Yeah. Jesus. Did you see, yeah, see the uh, recent clip of um, drop kicking somebody off stage? Uh, <laughs> no. Yes, I it was insane. <laughs> yeah, he just jumped up in the air, double footed him off the stage, and just stood back up. They're like, "Yep, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I'm about. <laughs> yeah, I am totally here for it. Uh, but yeah, man. Um, again, is this one you guys are thinking of coming over to Leeds for? I did look at it. <laughs> I am trying to consider it financially. What, what day is the 19th? It's a Friday. That's why it's even more tempting. Oh. Stop shaking your head at me, man. I can't handle I've it. I've got to go to some gigs. <laughs> can't go to no gigs. <laughs> if only you knew somebody who lived in Leeds with a spare room. I know, right? To save on a hotel. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 See. <laughs> it's all, it'd be nice to go back to Boom as well, because I do like Boom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, cool. Next, something. Next. You know what? I've had enough hardcore. Oh, I'm full from hardcore. We've got something like stupid to talk about. <laughs> I could give you something stupid. Oh, really? I'm sure that'd be good. Yeah. Go on. Let's yeah. see what I've got for you in my lovely mailbag. I have Guns N' Roses <laughs> with Snoop <Have> Dogg. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why the fuck? No, what the fuck? <laughs> Does the same guy who booked the uh, Blink-182 tour with <laughs> was <laughs> <laughs> Lil Wayne <laughs> just, just... Is he getting round? <laughs> so, this... Is a music festival? Uh, I think this is basically uh, like a Super Bowl thing. So it's around the Super Bowl. Oh, is it? They have like a music festival at the same time. Bud Light Super Bowl Music Fest. Yeah. Terrible Um, beer, terrible (laughs) lineup. It just makes me happy to see those two things. I'm not a fan of either. Just be together and that to coexist makes me quite happy. I I, would choose Super Dog over Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Give me some like old Snoop Doggy older, Dog. Like some old Snoop Doggy yeah. Dog. Yeah. Uh, not more of his recent stuff, but like, yeah. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Deep. I'm, I'm fine with that. But this just this makes me happy just seeing these two names together. Yeah. But what this made me think more than anything else, obviously... This is something very 90s, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like someone in the 90s went, this is a great idea. <laughs> but like I said, oh. this year we've got three... Uh, um, two Guns N' Roses are playing in London uh, for two shows oh, this shame. year and one in Ireland, I think, in Dublin. Mm-hmm. But now I'm just like, I wonder if they if this carries on just like what the UK equivalent would be. It's like Guns N' Roses with Dizzy Rascal. Like, <laughs> Stormzy. Oh, they can't afford Stormzy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyone who cares in America, uh, January 31st, they're playing at the, uh, as I say, the uh, Super Bowl. Miami, Florida. Yeah. Yeah, right. where Snoop Dogg is allowed a half hour set and Guns N' Roses do three and a half hours. Uh, <laughs> turn up two hours late. Yeah. Uh, apparently they're not, not as bad anymore. Now that Axel's less yeah. of a cunt. Mm. You mean they're not as bad at being late? They are still bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're a bad band. <laughs> <laughs> they're not bad people. <laughs> Oh, uh, sake. Next, just, yeah, just those little palate cleanse of that from yeah, hardcore, nice. wasn't I, it? Yeah, yeah. Enjoy you that. enjoy that. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on from that then. Um, uh, yeah, so weird one this one. Uh, so Big Thief, uh, the kind of a uh, lo-fi kind of instrumental rock band. Uh, they are going on a European tour with some pretty big dates. Yes. Um, usually wouldn't put this on here, but um, I added it for one of the support acts. 
Yes. Yes. Uh, so it's our good friends Ithaca. Our good friends Ithaca. Yes. yes. That metal car band. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that band which is going to scare a lot of big thief fans. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Fair play to them, man. This is an awesome yeah. tour to get on yeah. for the mm-hmm. venues. Alone. Some like, great venues. The first one that they're kicking off on, uh, February 27th at Hammersmith Apollo, <laughs> is... I, I th- yeah, that's insane. Got, then Rock I, City I, uh, yeah. in Nottingham. Mm-hmm. Albert Hall in Manchester. Yeah. That's a beautiful venue. I love that venue. Yeah, how big is that venue? That was the venue? first thing I, I looked. I was just like... I I had to listen to Big Thief. They, they, they're fine music. It's not my kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like... I'm trying to justify myself spending the money on the ticket because the idea of getting to see Ithaca play a venue like Albert Hall yeah. would be incredible. I looked at it and it was 25-ish quid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Manchester. Which Ithaca's worth 25 pounds. They really are. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd be I'd be tempted to come over for that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, how, like I say, how big is Albert Hall? Uh, I'm terrible to gauge capacity, but... <sighs> more than 12 people. It's more than yeah, twelve, probably, yeah. Okay. I can definitely, uh, I can definitely it's, say it's more than twelve. It's probably at least, it's close to a thousand, probably. Oh, and Maybe apparently, like small. this tour's already selling out as well. Yeah, some of the dates. Uh, so, which yeah, insane. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, no man, congratulations to Ithaca. Like this is obviously their first big tour of uh, twenty twenty, and holy shit, it's a big one. Yeah, no, this is absolutely fantastic for them. What's the guy looking at? Uh, looking at? He's looking at the lineup. <laughs> look at that fucking tour on Jesus oh. uh, he's just looking maybe they're all just posing and at that exact moment he took a picture he went I think I've stood in some shit <laughs> yeah that's shit that. <laughs> it's like oh shit we've got to go on after I- Ithaca <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird one it's a weird yeah. it's great for Ithaca to yeah. get mm-hmm. like on a tour of this scale yeah yeah um, yeah, very. Well, like, the weird. thing it's like I'm always one for varied lineups. I always love seeing like a, a good sort of like you know uh, not contradiction, but like it's two bands which you wouldn't normally see tour together. Tour yeah, together, yeah, it, yeah, I, yeah, I I find yeah. it very refreshing. But yeah. it's still when I see something like this, I go, what? <laughs> I, I can't like <laughs> you not get to that. Big Thief, didn't you? What's that? You yeah, to I had listen to them. Well, it's, I didn't listen to any of them. This. Um, it's, it's just I quite, heard the word indie. Yeah, um, but a bit more sort of indie rock, quite subdued. Yeah. Just really like any screaming vocals. No, not that I heard of the three any songs I listened cards? to. No, uh, like no. I said, I, I I worry for the. Any bees? I, I worry for um, what will happen to the fans of Big Thief who show up to see Ithaca. Uh, I mean, they're gonna get fucking blown away. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I can tell you now, it's not what they're expecting. No, <laughs> no. no. But no, Ithaca. I'm sure they're going to go out and fucking smash well, it. Try and get down to watch Ithaca and I'll probably leave before Big Thief. <laughs> You're going to pay 25 quid just to see Ithaca. Yeah. yeah I mean, fair. if I put the total of what I spent to see Ithaca last year, I mean, definitely yeah. more. Mixed with the total from the merch sales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely well over 25 quid. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. Anyway, good. Cool. Nice. nice to see small UK bands getting good shit. Yeah, uh, can can we make 2020 the year of the mixed bill? Because I am totally down for that. Yeah. Oh, unlike last year where all the bills were completely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I remember that point, fucking actually. Smashing Pumpkins AF5 fucking Noel Gallagher tour. Yeah, that's standard, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just standard shit. Yo, I want that level of weird in the UK gigs. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. It was it was a very uh, we had a lot of varied lineups yeah, yeah. in America, UK, pretty standard. I think it's because I think we said this about kind of before though. I think it's because their uh, musical kind of scenes are a bit more mishy mashy together. Yeah. Like, because the radio just plays kind of a bit more of everything, doesn't it? So probably someone was like, oh yeah, I've heard all those bands on the radio. That makes sense to me. But we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> mm-hmm. no. Anyway, next. Right. Shut up, Paul, and run the jewels. And what? <laughs> 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 yeah, John next. <laughs> um, Milk Teeth. Yes. 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 Uh, so they have announced hey. their uh, new album. Uh, yes. It's coming out. Uh, oh, I stupidly didn't make a note of the dates. I was in a... I'll get it. Just Paul. Fuck's sake. Uh, but yeah, so they've announced the new album's coming out. Uh, they dropped another single today, but as is the rule, you've already had two, so you're not getting yeah. a third. Sorry, guys. Much to my dismay. Mm-hmm. You're still allowed to listen to it, you know that. I know, but I want to talk. <laughs> anyway, uh, the album's uh, self-titled Milk Teeth, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will be out on Music for Nations on the 27th of March. Cool. Good stuff. Nice, yeah, but they are also following that up with a lovely little tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so they have announced a UK, UK run of dates uh, in April. 
Uh, so kicking off on the 1st of April uh, at Tunbridge Wells Forum. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go quickly run through all these. So you've got London Auto Academy in Islington, uh, Cambridge Portland Arms, uh, Brighton Patterns, uh, Norwich Waterfront, uh, Leeds Key Club, woohoo. Um, <laughs> <Perped up. laughs> uh, Newcastle Think Tank, uh, yes. Glasgow in King Tut's, and then Manchester Academy 3. Yes, Academy 3. Yeah. I think uh, I've come back this year, man. I'm fucking buzzing about it. <laughs> <laughs> you just did like fucking Wallace Walls and grab my hands in over oh. that. Ooh, <laughs> I can't say the command. Yeah, so that tour is with Potty Mouth and Koji, uh, except mm-hmm. for uh, the first date, which is just Koji. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I'm assuming you guys are going to try and get to the Manchester show. Yeah, yeah, yeah I am. I'd like to. I want to. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> it's a very. De- it's going to be a very depressing year for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's already starting out to be a really good year for gigs, isn't it? I, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now, that gig will be at, at most fifteen quid. Yeah. Well, just a viable. You could do that. If, yeah, but the, if, I believe but in you, if the floodgates will open if I start allowing some fifteen pound gigs in. <laughs> <laughs> you like, like one fifteen pound like, well, gig. I can't in. go to that one and not go to that one because I said no to that one and that one was a tenner. So oh, I'll go. <laughs> if, it, if it helps, eleven pounds, right. including the fee, the mystery pound fee that I don't, I don't even know sure what it's for. But yeah, eleven quid. Could not argue with that? And it's a Friday as well, mate. In Manchester at Academy 3, 11 quid. I feel like you've got to get used to this for the course of the year. <laughs> what, just as needling you? Do the yeah, gig. basically. And me just have an internal dilemma. <laughs> like, but I need this money. It's not for us, it's for you. It's good for you. Think about Gareth on the 10th of April. No, it. I spent 2019 thinking about Gareth and I had a great time. <laughs> and, I, you want to do and now that? I'm dealing with 2020 guilt of having, <laughs> of, of coming out in 2019 with no money. But yeah. fun. <laughs> uh, let 2021 be that problem. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, cool. Yeah. 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 Next. Yeah. Next. Next. Sad news. <laughs> sad news. But said, sad news said with a happy tone. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sad, sad news, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So unfortunately, uh, band I only just discovered last year, uh, yeah. Pagan. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have sadly announced that they are splitting up. Yes. Uh, yeah, so they announced this on Facebook uh, and the socials and everywhere. But yeah, uh, after how many years, I don't know. It, they've finally uh, Several. said that they're ending it all. And yeah, we are saying goodbye to Pagan as a band. Uh, the cult mm. is over. Uh, the funeral is coming. And it's already sold out. <laughs> yeah. yeah so sold they announced, out very quickly. Yeah, so they announced they were doing one last date uh, in mm-hmm. Melbourne um, on the, tw- uh, the well, yeah, 22nd of Feb. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, it literally like that day that uh, they announced it, um, it sold out. Uh, so it's called The Last Waltz, they're calling the gig, uh, which is better than some names I've heard for gigs. Uh, <coughs> demonstrations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, wanna, I should talk about that, I see. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah, so it's them, uh, Total Unicorn and Blind Girls uh, at the Curtain mm-hmm. uh, in Melbourne. Uh, yeah. yeah, sad to see them go. Uh, as I say, I only saw them once when they uh, were playing Slam Dunk Festival. I think I went on a whim because you guys recommended them to me. Yeah, uh, and yeah, they blew me away. So uh, yeah, sad to see them splitting up. Yeah, I I got into them like beginning of 2018, mm-hmm. and I feel very fortunate I got to see them alive twice. Yeah, you got to see them in Star and Gar as well. Yeah, that's fucking great. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy I got to see them live before they kind of called it a day. Mm-hmm. Just to just have fun, uh, just a quick one. The last waltz, the last ever show, is on the twenty second. Yep. They have since announced another show the night before. Oh, okay, that's cool. Which is called the night before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nailed the, it again. <laughs> the night before the last waltz. So the night before <laughs> is unsurprisingly on the twenty first. Yeah. Uh, I presume it's the same venue and everything. Yeah. Oh no, uh, the, the workers' club. It says. I was oh, okay. Sport. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> go on there. What Facebook. am I reading? Do your work. Go on the Facebook. If you, I mean, at the same time, you have to be in Australia for this, so yeah, I can't help you. I can't do, help you. With do that. we have Australian listeners? Uh, 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 sure. Let's say we do. I hope we do. That'd if you nice. are in Australia, go listen to these guys live. Yeah, great. Because uh, this is your last chance you'll get to do it. Um, it is sad. I hope they're going to do other stuff, uh, mm-hmm. and I hope it does as well as this. Because yeah, I, I am sad that I'm not going to get to see them live again. Yeah, it's a shame. I really enjoyed the last the last album. It's fucking cracking. Yeah, it's a shame they won't be doing anything else. But 
good on you, Pagan. You had you had a good year with me. So. <laughs> I was gonna say it's just like it's unexpected because you don't expect when you you know when you do get into these bounds, you're just like, oh, fair yeah. play. These are gonna yeah, you know, I can see these get yeah. and you're like, oh, and they're gone. But yeah. you you never know, do you? What's going on behind no, the scenes? No, yeah, it's one of those, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, oh well, cheers, guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Next, I'm sad now. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, have we oh. got anything to make me happy? I think we might. Nope, definitely not. No. <laughs> no, yeah, we do. We've got we never learned to live gigs. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yay. Christ. Oh wait, they're all down south. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. So they've announced uh, three dates uh, in March. Um, so first off, they announced that they were playing uh, the Shed in Leicester on the 19th of March. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they followed that up with the announcement that they are playing the Mother's Ruin in Bristol on the 20th. Yeah. And finally, finishing off on the 22nd, uh, the Anvil in Bournemouth. <coughs> so, uh, just a quick allusion to allude to. In the interview, Sean mentions that they're going to be playing a lot more shows this year, mm-hmm. but he couldn't say what shows these were announced after we did that interview. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, he so could have given us a hot scoop, but he didn't. No. Why? So Sean? one of the things he said <laughs> was, yeah, he told me in the interview that, like, yeah, if we didn't, we interviewed him like a week early. I was like, oh, that's a shame. Uh, and then yeah, he's um, yeah, just announced these before we even get the interview. The it was literally like the next day or something, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, With hindsight, no, like, we probably should have just got him to tell us everything and then yeah. released it later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's even, when, when these when you told us that, Paul, I listened to the interview and then these came out, and I was like. I mean, if we just said we're putting the episode out when it's going out, he, mm-hmm. he might have just told us. Yeah, no, I, I did. My, when I said that, it wasn't with the idea of tricking him in and then us taking that out earlier. No, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> saying the actual facts of it. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're, we're, you're in trouble now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would have tweeted it to my two followers. <laughs> One of them's Paul. Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, if you can get to any of these shows, definitely do. Uh, we never learned to live a fantastic life. Oh, amazing. Um, Absolutely amazing. Um, and again, if you've... We talk about them frequently, I feel like, recently especially. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you've not yet heard the album, go check mm-hmm. out immediately. Paul's album of 2019. It yep. was 2019. Uh, and you'll hear Sean talk about that momentarily in an hour after we talk shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we believe in you. You can get through this. Yeah. A bit more oh. chat and shit and you get to. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, oh, no. I just have to say about it, but I'll wait till the after the interview to okay. say it. It's, it, ties in with, it ties in with this. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'll wait till after the interview. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> News done. Yeah, done, mate. All done, isn't it? Sick. Cool. So we're going to move into new music. Uh, so during the week, we had a new song from Alex on Fire dropped Season of the Flood, mm-hmm. which I fucking didn't do the research. I guess it's coming off an album. Nope. No, no, it's uh, t- another ten-inch single, same oh, as the fuck uh, last off. one. <laughs> fuck <laughs> off! Two last year they did. Mm-hmm. Pit- right, I'm sure they're just doing this to get us to review them all. Wait, two? I only remember was it familiar two. drug? Yeah. There's, there's something, something drug, and there's one got like complicated or something. Oh, I don't remember that one. Yeah, well, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> well, if you don't remember it, it probably sounded a bit like this because this is what Alex is on fire sound like now. This all the time, nothing interesting happens. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like this probably was a review I did on the last one where it was it's in the basis of there's nothing bad here, but there's nothing very interesting here. Like yeah. for a band, like so, I don't want to discredit Alex on Fire anyway because I think Alex on Fire is a fantastic band made up of fantastic musicians with great skills and talents. Uh, and I loved like up to born and raised, like all those albums are great. It's just recently, it's becoming a bit stagnant. Like everything they're putting out, it just it's either just it's just kind of a bit middle of the roady, a bit samey, and it, there was nothing surprising about this. Like I saw it come out, like I know what this is going to sound like, and it sounded exactly like that. Where it's ninety five percent Daryl, not Daryl, <laughs> Dallas. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> uh, just taking over the range, and then he like, yeah. and then he throws a bone to the screamer at the end of the yeah. song for a bit, uh, and it's just he obvious. actually doesn't. There's some screaming towards the end. No, but it, he's the vocalist at the beginning as well. Oh, what the screamer is? Yeah, he's singing with Dallas. They're doing harmonies together. All right. oh, I thought he couldn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen him sing, so I thought yeah. he couldn't. Well, yeah, it's him. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah. You've got to do some clean vocals. Well done. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not bad in any way. It's just a bit... 
It's just, it's, yeah, it's just that. It's just what, what you can It's of a bit bizarre how they're releasing things because it's almost like, oh, we'll put these things out so they won't forget about it. It's like, you're Alexa Fire. No one's going to forget about you. Yeah. When you're ready and you want to release a new album, if you do, that's fine. People will be there ready and willing. You don't need, to, like, if this is just something you want to put out, fine. It just seems a bit peculiar to do it this way yeah. in the style that they're doing it, but it's fine. Like, I understand I just, that maybe it's an approach to the way music is now where it's very kind of like throw it online. You just digest songs. I know, of but albums. that normally comes from a, a very active band still, mm. and they're not. Yeah. And I, I almost would prefer it if they stayed a very non-active band, and then when we are in the studio, we've got a new album coming out, uh, and then just w- the way they're going about doing it isn't. It doesn't. It's not building you up for anything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And well, it isn't even really tying you over because it's not what you would have ideally gone for for Alexis on Fire. Yeah. So I don't quite know what they're going for other than it was just something they enjoyed they wanted to do it enjoyed doing had a bit of time yeah do you want you might enjoy it too there you go yeah <laughs> is it one of these is it this another release where it's uh, you say it's on like a seven inch and it's mm-hmm. like all very covered oh fucking it's pissing me off <laughs> really it pissed me off last year when they did it pissing me off now stop it <laughs> um, <laughs> right so I have opinions on this one yeah go for it I right when I first heard it uh, I had the exact same opinion as you guys did. I just uh, just discredited it out of hand. Just like, yeah, it's a it's another dull uh, Alexa on Fire song that doesn't really do anything. Mm. Uh, and then I found myself humming it like for the entire day, uh, and it just it just wormed its way into my head. It stayed and, with you, yeah. And then I went back to it, uh, listened to it a couple more times, started to pick out bits that really like sat really well with me, uh, like the intro just sounds like a doom song <coughs> yeah it's like a, like a really weird like post metal uh thing like it sounds yeah. like something cult of luna would write on a on a quiet day hmm. uh and then yeah then it's cats obviously we mentioned it brings in the like the screaming near the end uh and it has like a really good like gentle upward slope to the song like structure it's like, yeah, just little bits started like just jumping out at me. And as I say, like the song just kind of got stuck in my head. Mm-hmm. By the end of this week, like I've actually started to really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, can so, I can definitely see why. Yeah, like, I honestly they, don't yeah. think it's up to the scratch of like their albums. Yeah. But uh, it won't still... have longevity. Yeah. No, I, I think it's this... like you can go back now and like it to this day, you're still jamming to Born and Raised or Water Wings or. Young Cardinals, Young Cardinals, yeah. any it's, it's fucking hundreds. Yeah, I mean, I did uh, like I say, yeah. After listening to this track a few times, yeah. I did go back and listen to All Crows and Cardinals. Yeah, mm. in full, uh, and yeah, it's still a cracking album. Um, yeah. I, I was initially talking about online, like, would if they just stopped at that album, would that have been the perfect place, or are they going to go well, on they, to better they things? Did, sort of didn't they? Did yeah. it go away? And it was like I was like when they left, I was like, oh, that's a shame, but. It made sense to me at the time. I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I can see why you're stopping. Go do your other things." You, Alex on Fire's kind of done it. It's what it needed to do, mm-hmm. and for them to come back, that's cool. But I've, since their return, they've not done anything to make me go, "Oh, thank God you came back, guys! You've really, really cemented yourself as being back again." Mm-hmm. Just really releasing just mediocre, not mediocre, just like songs that aren't as strong as the back catalogue. Yeah, has no, I agree. Like Familiar Drugs yeah. and Complicit were, I think Complicit was a bit better, mm. but uh, yeah, Familiar Drugs was very. Mm, I liked um, Familiar Drugs for like a, a a couple of weeks, and then it got. Was that just forgotten. initial giddiness? Like, oh, yeah. you were like somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think if, if, if think if I dug back to that when that came out, I was like, yeah, that's fucking yeah, it's great. I really like it. The back baby, woo. And then like after, oh, they're not really like, okay. Yeah, and, and it, like, it, it, I forgot it, and it, it would come on my playlist. I'm like, skip, <laughs> skip. <laughs> mm. Yeah, after a few listens of this, like I didn't get as won over as much as you, Paul. But I did start thinking that if this, if they released a new album and I hand heard this song and this was the intro to an album, mm-hmm. it probably would have got me more. Ex- I, I was thinking this was this. I was like, I would be a lot more excited about this if this is how they introduced their new album. Yeah, like if I bung their new album on and this was the opening, I'd be like, ooh, fuck, I'm intrigued. Yeah. but it wasn't. It was just a single where it when it ends, you're like. Damn it! <laughs> I had the same like I had the same exact uh, response when uh, like Badger did that a minute ago about when when he found out it was a like just a single. It was like mm. I had the same feeling like if this is the beginning of a new record, amazing, I'm in. Uh, mm. But yeah, finding out it's just a single and it's just this is all that's coming out. I mm. mean, maybe it's not. Maybe there's more to come. But 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've had like three singles over a year now uh, and no talk of an album. I mean, you've got to think they're working on something else, but. Yeah. I mean. They can't just be, keep, this can't just, be just writing singles and then like, oh, we'll chuck that out and then we'll do another single and chuck that out. It, it will have to be inevitably leading to something. Mm. Bands don't just repeatedly release singles forever. I mean, you say that, but I mean, these guys can, like they've, like you said they earlier. Can, like, but you don't get that, really. No, but I mean, they're in a position where they can do that. As you said earlier, though, like they are at a position now where they don't have to make any more music. Yeah. And if they're having fun just releasing singles and mm-hmm. and people are buying them, then fair play, let them do it. But yeah, yeah they, just the output doesn't warrant that kind of release, I think. No, no. Yeah, it's just, like, the singles they're putting out, I just don't think are strong enough to carry their own weight. That makes sense. No, agreed. So, um, in summary, like I, I came on this quite hard. I came mm-hmm. in hot on this one. Uh, <laughs> it, I think you it, saw it by telling them to go fuck themselves. Yeah, so. yeah. It's, it's just the way they're doing it. I don't like the way yeah, they're doing it. I mean, you're, you're band guys, whatever. I don't give a shit. Um, but <laughs> it, as a song, it's fine. It's if you like Alex Fire, you're gonna like it. Obviously, yeah. dumb statement, but that's what it is. Uh, and it's uh, if you've never heard like some fire before, you probably enjoy it. It's just uh, for a band of that that with that legacy, I think it's just a bit like I, I know you can do better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I'd you say can... go check out if you want. Yeah, I mean, like I say, comparing like everything from like I'd say Watch Out uh, onwards, album wise, like this just doesn't pale into anywhere near that kind of level. Yeah. Uh, I still think it's a good song. I just don't think it's a great one. No. Uh, yeah. I personally say check it out if you're an Alexis and fan or you just like some nice like relaxing music to put on. Hmm. Um, but it's not going to blow anyone away. No, it's a sort of like I'm in the same boat where I'm just like, yeah, it's fine. If you want to check it out, you check it out. But it's mm-hmm. it's it it does intrigue me that you know, say this year they just drop an album out of the blue, um, and then this was going down the route that they were going to like mm-hmm. i find that quite true i'm quite interested in sort of them exploring more of this side um of their sound but on its own with nothing more to go off it just doesn't sit very well when it's got nothing else to go with it hmm. yeah i think that's it like if this was part of a, a grander scheme then i could probably get behind it more but for now it's just like yeah it's it's fine uh, but I can. It's one of those songs that I'm not going to go back. Same with the other two. I'm not going to go back to it. No, yeah. I'd rather happy. just listen to the older albums. Yeah, same. Mm. Uh, I'd say I think this is probably leading to something. It'd be weird if it wasn't. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. I, if they're going to keep, we as we we've mentioned before, we have a rule where we only do two singles and then an album. Yeah. And I don't want to keep on to do singles. <laughs> uh, I, I don't. If they release another thing, I don't know if I'm going to fucking bother. No. <laughs> unless there's an album promise, because unless it's, unless it's it somehow blows me away, but I don't know. Anyway, uh, sure. <laughs> whatever. It's, it's just, it's just, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, anyway, moving yeah. on. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the next single and the last single of this week, uh, Giver, drops the new single. Every age has its demons. Brackets like an empire. Brackets. Uh, this is coming off the forthcoming album, which is out next month. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> um, uh, we we reviewed one of these songs. So this is their second. We did mm-hmm. miss one due to technical difficulties, so you got a pass. Yeah, so you, you can have your third, but we're not going yeah. back to the second. Yeah, <laughs> but you should because that was a good song. Yeah, <laughs> like this. This is also a good song. I don't know what it's about Giver. But they remind me of another band so hard, and I cannot for the fucking life of me think who that band is. It's Modern Life as well. That's what they remind me of. Possibly. Yeah, that's not a, not a bad shout. Something actually. like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, immediately putting this on today, and <sighs> I've heard the other songs, but I still, for some reason, majorly surprised how much I got fucking giddy as soon as it came in. <laughs> yeah. It, as soon as it kicked in, I was like, fucking mint! Just started spin kicking in my fucking kitchen. <laughs> and when I say spin kicking, I just mean literally like slightly up to the ground. <laughs> just walking. Yeah, just walking, 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 walking in a walking circle. Around, walking more grandly. <laughs> uh, no, this is a fucking ripper of a tune. Really good. Uh, literally within the first couple of seconds, I've just fucking hooked and like buzzing my tits off about it. Um, it's I, From this and the previous two singles, I can't fucking wait to hear this album. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited to look forward to see what this band doing. Yep. I, the, the general sound and the energy behind the music is what I'm for. Yeah. And I can't wait for all of it. 
in my face. I I also want to smother my face and give up. That's no, that sounds weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm with you 100. percent Like I love this. Uh, as I say, it's uh, it's super strong, like a modern version of like modern life as well. Um, yeah. It's just got that like angry kind of but melodic hardcore that I I just I want it straight in my veins. Yeah, mm. and these guys do it perfectly. And this song again is another one uh, that's. Uh, just like to a T is just my soundtrack. Um, yeah, I loved it. Um, again, can't wait for the album. Uh, we don't have too long to wait now. It comes out the seventh, I think. Yeah, seventh of Feb. Yeah. So yeah, give it to me now, please. <laughs> <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Paul likes it because it's on Holy Roll. Just oh yeah, oh, yeah, it is. I did you know they're on Holy Roll? Yeah, yeah. That's probably why Paul found them. Fair play, Holy Roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not letting up in 2020. <laughs> um, <sighs> I um. I weirdly, so I, I knew we reviewed these before, and unfortunately, they actually did fall in the Gareth completely forgets about this band. <laughs> um, so just before we started recording, I was just like, what was the other track we did? I can't remember the, the title of it now. If one of you want to remind me, either you remember. Nope. Uh, it was the title track of the album. Oh, okay. Violent. I, ca- I can't remember. Structures of Violence. But as soon as you played it, I instantly <laughs> recognized it. I went, fucking forgot. I loved that track. <clears throat> um, and that's what made more sense of why. I, it, basically, I really like this track. <laughs> and it just made me go, why don't I remember the last track they did as soon as you put it on? I was like, damn it, that was a tune. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, and the more I listen to it, the more I like, I'm the same as you, Paul. The more sort of this more melodic side of hardcore is I really get a kick out of. They yeah. do it fucking solid. Um, yeah, not much more to add other than I, I too, am excited for album and yeah. will enjoy listening. Good Cannot album. wait. <laughs> Good album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd say Golden is goddamn right now. It's a cracking, belting tune. Yeah. 100%. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Spin kick for days. Yeah. Spin kick. <laughs> walking grandly. <for> grandly <laughs> walking for days. Stomping around kitchen like twat for days. <laughs> yeah. Great stuff, Giver. Give us more. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Cool. Happy. Yes. Oh, relatively. Good. All things considered. Moving on to albums then. In, it, we really should do the EP first, but I kind of want to save it to last. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So, Annie Flag dropped their. I guess aptly titled 2020 Vision. Yeah. <laughs> I presume that's on purpose. Yeah, I would assume so. Cool. <laughs> uh, we have done two songs off this before. It yeah, they've released the... other singles, but yeah, due to the rule. The yeah. rules. We have rules. Uh, I remembered one of them, which was uh, it, Christian yeah, was Nationalist. Cr- nationalist. Cr- nationalist. Sure. <laughs> Christian Nationalist. Thanks. And the other one we did... See, I thought it was, was Hate it? Conquers All, but I'm not sure if yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was Hate Conquers All. Okay, mm-hmm. so... Right, okay, that makes it a lot more sense in my head now. So I remember Christian Nationalities because I remember actually quite liking that tune. Yes. And when I came on this, I went... I, d- a, no, just let him keep doing it. it. <laughs> Stop it, Paul, this is funny. <laughs> uh, and when it came on this album, I was like, yeah, I remember this. I remember why I like it. Uh, Hate Conquers All, I remember that because that's the first track on the album. I remember this coming on and being like, did you do this? And then that one, I, I remember why I wasn't super keen on it. It's just the way it is in parts and wasn't great. Just to, I can't put my finger on it. I think it's like the way they do the vocals. Um, but as an album, it's generally all right for me. I mean, I'm not a big Anti Flag fan. I, I enjoyed this more than I thought I would. Mm. A band I've never particularly shown any, or well, paid any attention to in the past. It's a punk album, obviously. <laughs> I'd be disappointed if it wasn't. Yeah. To be fair, uh, <laughs> and it just but it's got some good bits in it that. Piques my interest. Yeah. Uh, but, but then obviously I have some other bits that I'm like, uh, <laughs> bloody thing, punks. Punk, <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's all right, isn't it? It's yeah. Fucking, yeah, it's okay. Fucking, fucking punk. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. Uh, slow, slow song's a bit slow. Everyone's got to have a slow song. Uh, um, yeah. Go, go. Do you want to go for it, Paul? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we should save yours to the end because I know yeah. I think You're I've got expert. an idea of what yours is. <laughs> going to be, be that exciting. Got, uh, I've had a, a chance to listen to it once, well, <laughs> once <laughs> and a half, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, for this album, that's enough. <laughs> like, yeah. no, I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> I, know, um, I know, but it's like it is. <clears throat> it's not a deep thinker, is it? <clears throat> it? Yeah, it's 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 not. It's but it's classic, like anti flag. It's a well produced, uh, well written punk album. Uh, it sounds like Anti Flag doing Anti Flag songs uh, to the best of their ability, mm-hmm. which is really, really good. That's coming across really negative, and I don't want it to. Like, I really enjoyed this album. Yeah. Um. I think yeah. I think Christian Nationalist. Uh. Yeah. And Hate Conquers All 
perfect singles for me. Uh, they work mm-hmm. really well on this album yep. as well. Uh, I loved we just, it all the way up until the last just, song where the horn section came. Listen. Sorry, so can't just, have, well, can't have a, don't talk about that. Well, like you're talking to me. No, sure. Badge is here, just like, what are the other singles? You know, the two which we just listed, and then Paul said while he was talking about it. Go on, sorry, Paul. Christian last list of Hickok as well. Go on. Keep your dilemma to yourself. Sorry. Go on, Paul. Sorry I interrupted you. Just no, no, it's fine. You, you guys have your domestic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all I was saying is I really enjoyed the album. I think the singles were the standouts for me. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the worst part of it was when the horns came in at the end. <laughs> I, th- I like that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I do you take that. <laughs> You're like Scar. I'm, I'm being honest, I think he gets that part. I had a problem. I ran out of time near the last track, unfortunately. So. <laughs> yeah, well. um, no, my thing was, what was the third single we didn't do? Uh, the Disease, I think, was the, the third right, one. Okay, okay. Yeah. That was it. I was just wondering what the other single was. Because the two, the, the, like Paul said, the two singles we did are good singles and good examples. Yeah. But I want to know what the third one was to see if that was the same. I'm unsure. I think they may have ended up releasing four. I think Unbreakable might have ended up being one as well. Well, that's too many. They, they, oh, yeah. They, they, <laughs> I think they, 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 like, so they brought out like all the lyrics like, before and for all songs as well. They went out there. Went out. Um, yeah. Um, you pointed something out for me off um, a one and a half listen. I'm go- I, because it's me and I'm a big Anti Flag fan, mm-hmm. and I got, um, I'm got i seeing them again next month, which I'm looking forward to. So I'm going to listen to this album a lot. Because uh, I like Anti Flag a lot, yeah. uh, but on the first few listens of this, easily Christian nationalist, uh, nationalist fuck Badger, you got me going now. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out with me, I know. And Hey Conquers All, I didn't pick up on anything as strong as those two songs. Yeah. I fucking love those songs. I've been listening to Christian. I fucking can't say it over and over again. The now Christian you can song. Uh, Christian nationalist. I've had that on basically most yeah, playlists yeah, yeah. since we've reviewed it. I mm-hmm. regularly listen to that song. I think it's fantastic. Um, nothing really jumped out of me um, that bettered those two singles. Um, however, solid, like you said, if you want... And if the great thing with anti Slag <coughs> is they don't release anything that tends to disappoint, uh, unless you wanted anything other than an anti Flag album. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, like you said, uh, I haven't got much to go dive deep into this, uh, which is unfortunate, because I haven't, I haven't really been able to give it the time I would have wanted to. Uh, mm-hmm. But I will. But straight off from the the listens I've had, I'm very happy with this. Okay. Um. The and then with the added bonus of I was happy when there was a horn section in the the last song of the track yeah, uh, on the on the album. <laughs> Absolute monster. <laughs> Hey, some of us just like fun, and that yeah. comes with trumpets. No, nobody likes fun. <laughs> I, I like fun, but not this kind of fun. No. Uh, but no, I mean, to be fair, this, I mean, I could go back to this album and happily listen to it again. I probably won't, but I wouldn't be disappointed if somebody put it on in my presence. Yes. Um, like, I, it's just, punk's a weird genre for me. Like, mm. I've, I find it hard to differentiate a lot of it in, yeah. in so much as, like, if you're doing a punk album, it's pretty obvious you're going to stick to 4-4 four, four yeah. and fast rhythms, uh, and it kind of becomes a little bit samey for me. You um, sound like me when I was trying to get into the last 10 years of hardcore music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, but no, it's like... We got you, though. You got me in the end, yeah. but... Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm saying this, but like, I still think this is a really good album. Um, uh, and yeah, I think it's very apt to have an anti-flag album in this oh. current climate. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And they, they, I mean, with a uh, little splicey in, in there of uh, some Trump and was just with it very blunt lyrics, which mm-hmm. can they're heavy handed, but like they're a band which need like they they're a punk band who deal with heavy handed topics and yeah. I mean, Trump's right on the fucking cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like I, it's, it's an aspect of them which I fucking adore because um, you know I, I like a bit of Paula. Politics and my punk. I, I think I, it goes hand in hand. I always yeah, yeah. look over the history I mean, of punk. I, I, I'll give credit, and I enjoy any album that tells Trump to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> essentially, uh, yeah. It, like Paul said, this is it's a good time for this kind of stuff to come out, and hopefully, it'll raise more awareness to, to, for people to tell Trump to fuck off. <laughs> and if, you, if you ever to, needed another, another reason, yeah. <laughs> or his or little are... mini me version in the UK. <laughs> oh, Tom. Yeah. Oh, can fuck off. Yeah. Uh yeah, it, it, in the end end of it, 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 I can see it's a good album. Uh, it's not right up my alley, but I didn't mind it. Uh, I'll take or give it. That's progress. I know, right? <laughs> I, the thing is, I'm like, I think I'm in, in a bit of a Paul camp where I'm like, I don't have a great thing with punk, 
My success rate with the punk albums you've brought to the table has been low. <laughs> you didn't mind Lagwagon or Bad Religion. Lag- it's been, Lag- basically, you, you, it's just, it's a very, you know what, Gareth? This was all right. Never going to listen to it yeah. again, but that was all right. <laughs> that's always the thing. Because <laughs> the thing is, you bring in good punk to the table. So if you're a punk person, yeah, go check out this album, Goddamn Right Now. If you're not a punk person, if you want, mate, it's up to you. Yeah. I think that's why I say for every punk yeah. album. Uh, as a big anti flag fan, I'm happy that I'm not disappointed with this. It's mm-hmm. given me exactly what I want from them, and I can't, I'm going to continue listening to it. I'm going to put a little playlist together and enjoy the fuck out of them when I see them live for the God knows how many how many a time. No, you don't worry about that, do you? You won't pay £11 pound for milk teeth, you bastard. Do you know why? Because I bought the tickets for this last year. We're all better off the table. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> if all these bands announced their, their, their tickets and tour dates in 2019, I didn't have my rule in place then. <laughs> <laughs> a simpler time. A simpler time where I decided, fuck, I don't need a, like any money behind me for anything. Yeah, but they announced all the gigs for this year, last year. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the dark uh, times now. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, solid effort by anti-flag if you haven't listened to anti-flag before this it really isn't a bad place to start nope. like it's a fucking great album which really just sums up exactly what you want from anti-flag um it's a i think this is a goddamn right now for punk fans or obviously anti-flag fans um it's it's i understand this isn't going to be for everyone and you don't need to go run out it's not gonna like change your life but it's a damn good listen and well worth going for yeah, no, I agree. I'd say if you can if you can get into the singles, uh, start there. Uh, and if you're not put off by them, then jump into the rest of the album because it is a really good album. It's catchy, it's fun, uh, it's got a good message behind it. Uh, and yeah, for a punk album in 2020, it definitely holds up really well. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good on you, Annie. Flag you, punks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, set of punks. Anyway, that was that. I enjoyed that. Thanks. That was the, that was the first punk of 2020. I think. Mm, we had pairs last week. Oh, we did have pairs. Yeah, yeah we had some pairs. First punk this, album. This is better. First punk album. Yeah, this first punk album. And I think this is better than pairs. You say that, I think the new pairs album should be fucking. Say that pairs are quite good. Hardcore punk. Album. Yeah. Anyway, could you moving, moving forward, you douche. Douche. Uh, yeah, so we need a warning, just like excessive use of the word douche to yeah. the point where you will want warning. to turn this shit off. This next review <laughs> will contain the word douche a thousand times and also jazz flute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the hell are back, you dick. Uh, <laughs> the hell are back with a, a new EP called Douche. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, we talked about this in the news. Yeah. Uh, must have been a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think. I might have briefly mentioned last week. Well, the thing is, I heard this when they just put it up on Facebook, was it originally? Or on their band camp or whatever it was. So I've had a listen to it before it got up onto Spotify. Um, But obviously, due to our rule of laziness, it has to be on Spotify for us to review it. Yeah, (laughs) that's why we're good. Uh, Yeah, so I I think this must have been announced three weeks ago. Mm. I'm sure it was the first episode of 2020 we talked about it. Um... I didn't expect it to come out today for some reason. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember them announcing the date for this release. Uh, and then kind of like yeah, this week. I, I think they announced it. Uh, it was part of that whole Kickstarter thing, wasn't it? Where yep. it's yeah, like yeah. the gold was a pound. Yeah, which was fantastic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was it? I liked as well this week when they built this, and this was originally because I, I was going to put this in the news, but obviously the album was coming out, so I thought it was redundant. They did like promotional videos for oh, it. Oh, is that what we watched before? Yeah, Fuck me, that's so funny. Just like with little fake reviews like, this album's so good it made me throw my mini disc away. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end it was like... From that guy in his blog. <laughs> yeah. And then I think the end of that advertisement was, it's out on the January the 16th to the 17th. We don't fucking know. <laughs> um, so, But yeah, as, a, as an EP, so if you don't know about The Hell, it's a band made up of mysterious members, one of which was definitely in Heights. I think. <laughs> and one of which might have been in your demise, I think. And some other people. Uh, they all went bandanas and shit, and they just made this fun, ridiculous, kind of hard, metal hardcore stuff. So, which fucking bang on this is, it's somewhere between a proper re- hardcore metal album thing and a comedy album? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said to Gareth before, they kind of remind me, in a weird, weird way, the kind of the best way I can try and describe it, is like, if like a lonely island hardcore or something. <laughs> sort of. Um, so, first song on the album, the title track is Douche. 
which is fucking great. So just Douche. a fucking raging party tune, essentially. Yep. Fucking literally got me fucking buzzing as soon as it came on. I've listened to it multiple times. Yeah, it's, it hasn't gotten old yet, has it? No. <laughs> it really hasn't. I really fucking enjoy that tune. Um, and I think that's quite a staple of what the band has been before, where it's like straight up, no nonsense, kind of like fucking raging, like non-stop noise, hardcore business. Uh and then it goes into the next trunk, which is Best Around, which has a fantastic intro. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the one where it basically sounds like Lizzo screaming the motherfucking yes. hell. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's the motherfucking hell, you dicks. Something. <laughs> not as bad as that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it, that's just a fantastic grand intro to a tune. Uh, and then I think, I like the way that every song's quite different. Yeah. So like then t- t- track three starts with fucking jazz flutes. <laughs> so if it sounds like it's straight out of fucking Anchorman. It's, it, it reminded me, it's, it's purely because I watched it recently, but I watched that Eddie Murphy film, Dolomite. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is fucking fantastic, but it seems like straight out of that, straight out of some, like, Starsky and Hunt shit, and I was just so in for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then the last one, which is now a current, um, a current favourite of mine, called Taste the Flavour, which is a, a weird song. <laughs> yeah, but it's still it's... good. I mean, it, this entire EP is weird, but in yeah. the best way possible. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like a weird. I, I'd say we're getting into what it sounds like. Uh, it's like a weird mix of TRC, uh, yeah. Your Demise. Yeah. Uh, it's got weird, like Grove Street Family hip hop influences in yeah. there. There's a bit like Comeback Kid sort of vibe in. Parts. Yeah, and then right. Honestly, I just want these and Can't Swim to tour together. Oh yeah. my god! I was imagine. Thinking, I was just doing anything like when I was listening. This is like a whole barrel of fun this EP yeah and on my, on my f- second listen to it I was like and as soon as I was listening to it I was like can't swim in it probably <laughs> be the last thing like this I guess yeah a- to be fair it can't swim is the first thing I thought of because since that this is another EP which reminded me in the same way of I love hearing a band just have the most fun possible and it come across in excellent music mm-hmm. and can't swim is the last example I have of that yeah uh, where I've never had so much fun listening to it as much as they probably had making it. <laughs> I, think, I think with this is like what I appreciate about it is like musically it's fucking tight. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you took the if you took the vocals away from it, like or the lyrics rather, and left the music, this could pass as like a proper serious hardcore band. Oh yeah, totally. That would be fucking like doing fucking well. But they went nah. <laughs> Let's just start rapping about flavors, <laughs> <laughs> about over the top of it. Fucking love it. It's such yeah. a good laugh, and it's like oh, that whole bit is like coffee flavor, <laughs> strawberry so, flavor. There's so many flavors. <laughs> I didn't even notice that the first time round, and Gareth no. pointed out, and I, I literally pissed my sides <laughs> with oh. that bit. Fucking love it. It's um, so good. I can't. I, I, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna jam this EP a whole fucking bunch. Yeah. Over this weekend, it's been a good year already for EPs. With this is pressure cracks, isn't it? Yeah, right. <laughs> more EPs, more EPs in 2020. Yeah, I've, I'd say for, if you anyway inclined to hardcore music, oh, I'd say go give this a, a spin for a good time. I think the closest I guess would be like what you kind of said, Paul, was a bit TRC, I suppose. Vocally, I think it's got that TRC vibe to it. Yeah, it's yeah. got that heaviness that um, I think TRC and again like old school um, your demise brought. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, again, I think it's just got the fun factor of like Can't Swim, mm, where it's just yeah. like, it's this and that EP are just like automatic cures for depression. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. It's ridiculous how much I enjoyed, like just when it came on after listening to Anti Flag, it's like, Anti Flag was fun, this is nice, it's a good punk. And then that, that first single kicked in, douche. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit, I'm happy right now. You needed it after that last Anti Flag <laughs> track had a horn section in it as well, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I really did. <laughs> But no, yeah, twenty twenty. Um, yeah, the hell, uh, can't swim top, please. Yeah, Joe you know was quite fun as well. Like, well, I was quite happy with this. It, this EP because I I heard douche. This EP was nothing like what I expected it to be. I expected a four track EP of douche, but fuck me, did they have fun playing around and just going balls to the wall with whatever they fancied, and it worked so fucking well. Like they could, and I feel like they could have just gone down the route of like songs like douche. But they didn't, and it was fucking great because of it. <laughs> because every track just leaves such a fucking like good stamp of what they can do on it. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Like you say, when uh, when you heard when douche finished, it's like cool, 
I'm ready for a couple more songs like that, and then um, I'll move on to the next thing. And then that, like, yeah, that gospel vocal kicked in. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, this is going to be fun. <laughs> but yeah, man, I absolutely love this. I think this is, um, we don't really do the whole, like, release of the week kind of thing, but I think for me, this is yeah. this is it. Oh, yeah, we have a no, winner. Yeah, I, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think as well, if you get the chance, I think if you go on YouTube, I'll, I'll just pull it up, come on, just have a quick look at the lyrics. Douche. You go, we can find a video, like a lyric video of douche. Please I've watched it. It's <laughs> fucking great. Yeah. Like, the, the, unnet, like, the, the efforts to find words <laughs> that sound like douche. <laughs> <laughs> like, can, say, my favourite the... lyric is when the EP drops and the sales go whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, jeez, I love it. I just like the same one like, eeny, miny, miny, douche. <laughs> uh, other words are sploosh, poosh, <laughs> and shoosh. <laughs> yeah, fucking brilliant. Cracking. I absolutely fucking love this. Uh, I, check it out, goddamn, right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. I hope because um, they've announced was it three dates? They they they're playing. Yeah, they're playing a couple of dates around the UK. I think we did talk about this. Yeah, yeah, we definitely podcast. have. Um, there was a secret London show, which I think they've still not told anybody what the venue is yet. Oh, are those I know they've done. I, I saw a video pop up like, okay, this is actually what it is. But I haven't watched the video, so was yeah, that obviously so, a lie as I, well? <laughs> I thought that was the announcement, so I did end up watching that video. And he's like, one of them's like, yeah, some the, the other members mugging you off, not telling you what the secret venue is. And I'll, I'll tell you because I'm not a prick. The secret venue is, and they start saying that the band just start playing behind him. <laughs> and he's just talking, clearly talking, and the band just like stopping. He goes, yeah, we'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> this band, is, they're just a fucking, they're just there to have a fucking laugh, aren't no, they? I, I wish I could it. get to any of those dates already, but yeah. it's not doable. I just hope that there's some more uh, in line this year. It's So far, it's Bristol, Southampton, Milton Keynes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the London show was today or not, actually. I'm uh, unaware. Not too sure. You, tell you in a second. You can let you. Do you have anything else to say on douche? Uh, no, just give me that fucking can't swim support slot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the uh, the secret on the show is on the nineteenth. Okay. So soon. Feb. Cool. Yeah, douche. Go listen to douche by the hell. It's fucking great. It is great. Love it. Yeah, I really. I honestly haven't got a bad thing to say about it. <laughs> I just want more. <laughs> it yeah, it's so good. too short. That's that's yeah. the only bad thing I can say yeah. about it. I don't know if I'd want more of it. Like I think like this this, this EP is like pretty good as it is. Yeah. And I mean they probably could put something else on it, but I'm pretty happy with this. No, that's fair. Well, I want more. No, it's not. He, he hates fun. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I would happily take a full this album. This is just a, a nice slab of fun. Yeah. I think so. Bite-sized fun. Mhm. Jump the fuck up. <laughs> uh, cool. Nice one. Good old. Uh, so that's it for live music this week. Uh, going to jump into a quick. Chin wag because me and Gareth went to see Slipknot, which was oh, gotcha. the episode. It was yesterday. I know, <laughs> <laughs> just yesterday. That's why I feel like shit now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so me and Gareth went headed to Manchester Arena in Manchester uh, to see Slipknot and Behemoth. 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 <laughs> uh, unsurprisingly, if you've listened to this podcast before, you'll know. I don't watch a lot of support bands because I'm a terrible bastard. <laughs> so, unsurprisingly, I didn't watch Behemoth. Yeah, the I actually, worst. Yeah. Well, what, right, what it is is, I actually have a reason this time. So, I had all intents and purposes to at least watch a bit of Behemoth because I checked out two of the songs and I was like, it's all right, innit? I could probably stomach it like 15 stomach minutes. Stomach it. <laughs> it's just not my, Black Metal is not I my thing. I understand, yeah. And you know what, musically, I was like, I didn't mind it. I was listening to the, to the tracks. I was like, you know what? This isn't bad. It's actually quite mm. good. I quite enjoyed it, but I won't. It's like some of the stuff we review where I'm like, it's good. I won't listen to it ever again, but I understand. Blah, blah, blah. So I was in all intents and purposes going to go watch a bit of Behemoth. I heard the rumor that the set was 45 minutes. Is that right? I, 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 must, I have no idea. I, I showed up during the second uh, song and I didn't keep a track of the time. So okay. I don't really know. <laughs> cool. Um, I had it was 45 minutes. I didn't know if I could stand in the arena watching Behemoth paying £6 for beer for 45 minutes. Yeah. So, <laughs> and it, because it's Slipknot, and literally every fucker on the planet likes Slipknot, a lot of mates were out. And a lot of mates I don't see very often. So I kind of got caught up in chin wags. And oh, these excuses. These are excuses. Know, so we were in the excuses. same place before. Also, I left. Do you know how many people are left there with him? Like three. No, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it was five, wasn't it? Two more minutes afterwards. 
Shut the fuck up. <laughs> anyway, and also my wife didn't want to watch him, so there you go. <laughs> the um, truth. <laughs> just, so yeah, that, just that's, that's, that's my bus, reason right. for missing Behemoth. So you yeah. can do your Behemoth review, and then we'll talk about stuff. Later. Okay. While you're behemoth. doing your Behemoth review, <laughs> uh, just for my own sanity, Badger, can you yeah. stop your tap dripping? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that would have got edited out in the mix, but whatever. It's it. That's fine. It's just in the background, and I can hear it, and it's driving me insane. It's like the audio version of water torture. <laughs> Welcome to the room. That's what we, we I deal with. <laughs> anyway, I'm Gareth, tell me more about your uh, behemoth. <laughs> uh, yeah, behemoth. Um, I basically I, I was completely won over by behemoth when I saw my download last year. Yeah. Um, there's there wasn't sort of um, much more to go off. Uh, they basically put on, for what I remember, the exact same show in a way, with the only thing I missed out on, unless it was dur- they happened during the first song, they didn't have the um, compressed air upside down crosses, which disappoint- I was very disappointed. I imagine with them in support band, maybe they didn't get the full budget. Oh no, they had a fucking enough of no, everything like, else. Not, not, yeah, but not like the full thing. <laughs> to be fair, I, I they had <laughs> all the smoke, all the compressed air cannons, all the fucking fire, all the fucking costume changes. The thing is, well, a costume change is easy. Just walk off stage, don't you do? I know, but I do like the theatrics. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll get to something, but with Slipknot, their stage setup is obviously ridiculous. I mean, it's, what was there like an hour gap between Behemoth and but the, the, Slipknot? But anyway, the whole stage setup stays on the stage yeah. for the. You know what I mean? So no, not, did you yeah. see the setup for Behemoth? I saw a picture of it. Yeah. Well, they just, it still just sits in front of the Slipknot cell. No, I mean? it didn't. Didn't it? it no. like it did. <laughs> it t- it, 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 it was, they had a full like um, back back piece, which would not have sat where um, the Slipknot cell was. I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming part of it was there. Basically, well, the only I guess the only thing I'm trying to say with this is there's a lot more there than you would have expected mm. for a support band, which is probably why they were the only support band, mm. which I still think is a load of shit. Okay. And that did really bum me out that no, there wasn't a, out another them, opening yeah. slot. You Why do you get them anyway? You never go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, you know, the thing is, if there was like because the size of the band, if there was another opener, well, like in previous years it was Corn and King. Uh, they've had King A Ten, and they've had uh, Corn and uh, they, Suicide Tendencies. Yeah. They've had, uh, but like we know, like how we've talked about the um, Viva Underdogs, the Parkway Drive thing, and they're just <laughs> like Venom Prison, come with us. Yeah, Slipknot could have totally done that with yeah, one totally. of those that level of bands. Yeah, uh, yeah. Vocalist of Venom Prison was there last. Right? Oh, were they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not surprising. Everyone likes it. So was the vocalist of Creeper. <laughs> Everyone's just an old dirty mosher, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, Behemoth, uh, they are one of the tightest like bands I've seen on like for that scale. Their music is fucking perfection. Whether it, This is why I kept trying to say to people, kind of, this sort of black metal... Uh, isn't for everyone. No. Totally understand that. Yeah. But I really did try to make sure everyone, you know, who was having a hurry to go for it, because even if you're not into, like, say, the vocal style, you'll just be in awe watching this band. They, yeah. Their music is f- so good live. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, yeah, it, it's so enjoyable to watch this band, I feel, whether you're into this music yeah, or not. Yeah. Uh, and I found it, because, like, I do delve into black metal now and again, but it's not my go-to. No. Um, and when I've bunged on their, their music coming up to this gig, it, it's good. It is good. But I always tend to then just jump over to something else after before getting to an end of an album. The problem I had with it, well, not a problem, but a thing I had, what I just noticed, is I remember you talking about the download show yeah. when we did that episode. I want to start going back to it. Um, you raved about it, and I was like, okay, I might watch them. And then on the build to the show, I was like, um, in an hour, I'm like, I don't really want to watch 45 minutes, but I won't mind checking out Gareth's still really good live. And then before the show, mm-hmm. we did meal with a lot of mates. There was a lot of yeah, it yeah. there. And a lot of you did go to watch Behemoth. Mm-hmm. Um, and my two mates who were actual big Behemoth fans, they were like, he coming. I was like, I don't know, because I don't really want to watch 45 minutes of Black Metal. And like, oh, mate, but they're so good live. I was like, what, what makes them good live? And like, there's fire. I was like, right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cool. uh, right, yeah, okay, cool. I mean, Slipknot have fire. What else? Because I'm going to see fire. I'm not worried about the lack of fire. What else is went? Oh, fucking behemoth finished. They got fire. I was like, you, you're just not selling to me, pal. Oh. Sorry. I was like, you, just he had. You have to else. tell me when we're not recorded. Who's the friend who just <laughs> like? But it's like shiny. <laughs> <laughs> it just the couple of people I, saw, I spoke about it. That was the selling point that it had fire, and it's like, 
I'm not going to go watch a band just because they have fire. No, they literally... I can make fire myself. <laughs> um, no, musically, for me, on that scale, it's um, it's nothing else that hits our level of perfection for that, for a black metal band. an actual church, I would have gone to say that. <laughs> yeah, I was because, like, yeah, they... <laughs> They literally finish their gig. I love it because it's, they talk about basically positivity and they'll do like, it's only like a few sentences, but it'll just be like, you know, it's just like, better yourself. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want. Go to the gym. And then, yeah, yeah <laughs> get, get kicked out of YMCA. And then always finishes it with like a little positive chat and they go, hail Satan. <laughs> and I love that because Satanism is a positive thing. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it is a, a hard sell for people who aren't part of the converted when it comes to blackmail. Completely understand. Um, they put on a fucking brilliant show, and I wasn't disappointed at all. Good. Loved it. Nice. Girlfriend didn't. <laughs> I enjoyed it when I got there, and your girlfriend seemed very pleased with herself that she just what she's doing. Booping you for the entire set or something. Oh, Christ alive, yeah. My girlfriend may have had a beer beforehand and got a, <laughs> well, I'm there trying to enjoy uh, Behemoth. She, she, she got a real good kick out of just just screaming miscellaneous shit down my ear. <laughs> I'm just like, can you, can I get, I'm just like, you turn around, I was like, can I, can I have one song? Just give me one full song to just, just, just zone out and listen to. Maybe. Oh, I fucking love her. <laughs> <laughs> he, says, he says with clenched fists. <laughs> yeah. God bless you, Ariane, you're funny. Um, yeah, on to Slipknot. On to then. Slipknot. So, um... <laughs> Let's start this one. Do you remember? <laughs> I had many beers. Uh, so yeah, obviously in true Slipknot style, the front of the stage was covered by a big fucking uh, cover with Slipknot on it. Mm-hmm. And in previous shows, which I think even happened at Download mm-hmm. last year, that would drop and they'd just kick straight into people equal shit. Is that correct? Uh, it's yeah. It's, was it people equal shit? You, you, it was. You go on. I think it was. They, they basically. I know what you're gonna go on it, to. They normally start with a very punchy song. Yeah, <laughs> it's usually like curtain drops, fire. Yeah, dun, 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 but dun, also dun, 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 the curtain does not no longer drop. Uh, and I, okay. I know you missed this because you were literally as they were coming on the stage and about to kick off. You turned around to me to say something, mm. and I'm just like, just totally missed one of the coolest things. <laughs> so yeah, they did a download as well. Where you'd normally, you know, as you've probably seen in many a big stadium gig, they'll have the sheet in front of the stage, it'll drop me a bit pyro straight into it. Yeah. No, they got this weird, like, sucky system now, where it shoots oh, it upwards back. and flies oh, yeah. into I've seen that out of nowhere. Yeah, I've seen that in performances. <laughs> but yeah, so they, but the thing with this one, they did the, they have the, the thing in the sucky curtain, we'll call it. <laughs> uh, the curtain got sucked off. <laughs> yeah, the suck off curtain. Got sucked right off. <laughs> uh, but they started with Unsated. Yeah. So it started with the intro from the new album, uh, which is called Insert, Insert Coin, Insert Coin yeah. which is which is quite not a bad intro. But then the problem was the curtain, the, the curtain sucked off, and then it went to the beginning of Unsated. Uh, it's not as dramatic, is and it? The thing is, with it, my problem with it was the band went on stage already. That's when they walked on. So there's a bit of a gap where this curtain just disappears. It's like maybe like a big reveal. And it just revealed an empty stage yeah. <laughs> for like a, like a couple of minutes. And then the band kind of sorted on, picked up the shit, whatever. And then it started. And it started. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is good. But it's not like, yeah, fucking we're a metal gig until that song kicks in. So it's like a couple, a couple like a minute and a bit of like, uh, uh, oh, yeah, okay. And then when it kicked in, I was like, fuck. <laughs> Because as soon as that band, when, they, when that fully launched in, it set off, it I automatically felt like I was at a festival for some reason. Yeah. It was just so big and over the top. Uh, and obviously, I mean, it's an arena show. But I just got this impression, I just got the vibe, especially in the room, right where I just felt like I was at a festival a bit. Yeah. It was fucking great. Um, the stage setup was fucking balmy. For some reason, they had two treadmills. Yeah. As, as you it's the same. As, um, no, I... If anyone hasn't seen them on this tour, but did see them a download, it's the same stage setup. That they had there. I've seen them at neither. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, it weirded me out for me because like Sid was just roaming around because obviously DJing is not always something to do. So he just tends to have a bit of a wander around and muck about. Um, and then I just noticed him walking on the spot and for like a split second I was like, is he just doing the moonwalk? <laughs> nope. No, it's a treadmill. Okay. Why wouldn't there be a treadmill? Of course there's a treadmill. Um, 
I just feel like a whole stage show and like everything else, there's fucking too much going on, man. So much shit. <laughs> I mean, it's nine members you're trying to yeah. keep track of. <laughs> I mean, my eye was constantly going to the newest member, which is commonly referred to as Tortilla Man. Yeah, yeah I was exactly the same. Yeah. Watching him because he's just fucking living it. Yeah, it, it, it's really... It's probably because he's the young, one of the youngest members. I don't think he's that young if he's the person who... Um, I mean, nobody knows. Supposedly yet, is. I don't know. He's got the most fucking energy regardless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, that, that guy's out the fucking best time. Bar the drummer, probably, but he has to stay behind the kit. Yeah. But no, that dude jumping off, um, haven't seen anyone from Slipknot jump off their, their drum rate rises, yeah. their circle thingamajiggies. Yeah. Um, but I saw him jump off, I was, I was just like, fucking fair, I haven't seen Sid do that since he broke both ankles while trying to <laughs> do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the set all in all was fucking tight, really good set of songs. I think we we were looking at the American set list and that was like, that was fucking decent. They swapped a few songs around, they basically kept the hits. So you still had like, Wait and Bleed, Surfacing, uh, People Equal Shit, Duality, Psychosocial, all those. Personal favourite for me was Vermillion. Yeah, it was nice to hear Vermillion. I really like that song. Uh, odd Cuts were uh, Eeyore. New, new Abortion. Uh, Eeyore. Eeyore was a yeah. really weird one, because it's the third song in as well. Yeah. Didn't expect to hear Eeyore at all, and then for it to be the third song in, it's kind of like a very weird tune. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Um... But all in all, fucking good. obviously the band performed fantastically. They always, I mean, they've been doing it for fucking years. They know what they're fucking doing. Yeah, they have a practice. Yeah. The highlight for the show for me was possibly the bassist, <laughs> who blew my tiny little mind. Especially <laughs> more so when I was drunk as fuck, because he stood at the back and then fire started going off near him, and I was like, oh, he stood right near some pyro. That's a bit mad. And then I realised, no, he's not stood near a pyro thing. He has a flamethrower. <laughs> And I think at this point, I was like, after a couple of minutes of me going, he's got a fucking flamethrower. I'm, I'm going to think I turn to you and just scream in your face, Gareth, <laughs> the bassist has a flamethrower. <laughs> I know about you. <laughs> that, so from happen. what I hear, it's like, this entire gig for you, Gareth, was just people shouting at you. Yeah, yeah my, my tinnitus loved it. <laughs> it didn't start either, because I think after the gig, we, we just carried, carried on shouting at you. Oh, it was a loud journey home. <laughs> yeah, with definitely. a lot of... Gavin and Stacey references directed at me. It's great. <laughs> it's, that's a diff- different conversation. Slipknot. Uh, <laughs> no, all I like... The, 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 that flame throw thing really got me. Yeah. Loved it. Do you remember what you said earlier where people just try to stop him to you and they're just like, it's got fire. Yeah. And you're like, well, that's not how you win, win me over. They have a flamethrower in Slipknot now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I realise the irony. Of <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it all like fucking... It, I was still buzzing off it this morning, the yeah. show. Um... Arena shows aren't usually the ones that I usually leave, but this is like the second one where I've been like, fuck. Because Planet of the Disco last year was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and this was also fantastic. I won't go to arena shows unless I really have to, but this was definitely worth it. And it nearly got me to go to another one. I was looking at Sheffield tickets. And then I checked my bank account from last <laughs> night, and that was not going to happen. Yeah, you, uh, you really shouldn't do that. <laughs> no, don't buy a rounds in the arena. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, big highlights for me were hearing sort of getting to hear Disaster Piece again. Uh, Eyeless, I don't, I must, from the amount of time I've seen that, I must have heard oh, yeah, them I, play Eyeless, yeah, but I that was a massive highlight last yeah. night. I was buzzing off that. I love hearing that song play live. Um, the weirdest thing I found, which I am chuffed with that they throwed it away, but I'm gutted I don't get to hear the song anymore. Every time I've seen them, they play Spit It Out. During Spit yeah. It Out, they do what they call the crazy test. It's not that crazy, <laughs> uh, but basically, just jumping, they, isn't yeah. It? A, a part where before they go into the "fuck me, I'm all out of enemies" part, they get everyone to sit down on the floor, and then when they kick in, everybody jumps up. They've done that every time I've seen them. They've literally only just sort of cut it out their set, mm. like they did it download as well. I I am fine with this because my body, after standing there watching loads of bands, doesn't like crouching down and then trying to get back up. And I don't jump up. I slowly go down and I slowly get back up. <laughs> yeah. um, so, But it was weird seeing Slipknot and them not do it. It's such a staple of their live show. Um, but yeah, the biggest bummer of that is just not hearing Spit It Out anymore. But there's enough yeah. here to just... They're still playing Sick and Surfacing, yeah. which I fucking love. I was like, upset about the lack of Spit It Out, but then I think like the trade-off for Eyeless is pretty, yeah. pretty solid. Uh, also, I mean, yeah, like you say, sick. Fucking sick's great. Also, the, in fact, they had the intro. Yeah. And then sick. Yeah, that yeah. was fucking great. Um, also, like, they obviously dropped some new cuts from the album. We played Birth of the Cruel and Nero Forte, which I think are the live debuts of those songs. Well, Dublin was. Yeah, well, Dublin. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this tour was the live debut of those songs. They sounded great. Really enjoyed it. Really made me made me appreciate Birth of the Cruel a bunch more than I did when the album came out. I enjoyed that song on the album, but now only I'm like it was stuck in my head today. Mm. It's rare, yes, that song stuck in your head, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, yeah, fucking absolutely buzzing. Great. Kind of tempted to go to Knotfest. Probably won't because it's expensive as shit. <laughs> um, but and, and unless the lineup's ridiculous, nine pounds. Yeah. Like I was mentioning to you earlier where I'm just sort of like, I, I'm not reaching the same level of enthusiasm because I've almost like given myself slip not fatigue after just feels like seeing them every time they come around since I was like 16. Yeah. Um, they still, I recommend everybody to go see Slipknot. They're fucking phenomenal live. I would recommend probably seeing them at a festival over an arena. I think just for their sound, it just comes across a lot clearer yeah. uh, at a festival. But yeah, that's not a very common thing that's said, is it? I, I, I for Slipknot, I found it's, maybe it's just the Mansion Arena. Cause I, well, I somehow saw them in Cardiff I as well. I think it depends on the festival yeah. and what the weather's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always, I, I, I always find uh, the the lyrics come through a lot clearer when they they play festivals. Oh, also, I was very happy that I tweeted about the flamethrower, mm. and then some nice chap on Twitter tweeted me a video of the flamethrower, <laughs> just for <laughs> you, <laughs> which I didn't have. I need to try and figure out how to get that off Twitter so yeah. I can have it on my phone. <laughs> so. But no, uh, um, they're about. I love the fact that it, it's like even though through horrible circumstances bizarre legal issues yeah. but whatever the fact they have these three new members they really do bring a new life to this band you yeah. can feel the energy yeah. of these new instances they also did a quite nice thing with their outfits because obviously they are very uniform where they're all wearing yeah. the boiler suits or their funky weird shit yeah. but you had the three newest members all wearing red jumpsuits mm -hmm. then you had this sort of triangle uh, where you had like Corey uh, the keyboardist Craig and I think it may have been Spiky head that's great, yeah, it's baggy head. Yeah. And I think it may be Mick, the guitarist, they were all in white, so it had like a triangle I thought Jim, of them where they were in white, and then the other three then in black. I think Jim and Mick were both in black and red. Oh, okay. I think Clown was in black and red as well. Yeah. But how it looked on stage, it just like, it highlighted the new members, but then they had like this nice little triangle of like the guys who were wearing white. It just looked really striking. Just, it, it might sound little, but it's just another part which just sort of adds to the more yeah. theatrical side of the show as well, which yeah. I, I like that. Also, Corey Taylor's mask looks a lot better in person than it does. In do you know what? He best. did something which I haven't seen him do before, which sort of won me over on his mask. Yeah. His mask is a bit plain. He sort of plays around with his face yeah. paint underneath. But he did so while he was singing, where he like grabbed it, and it's quite stretchy. Mm. So he's almost like pulling the mask away from his face, but it kind of just looks like he's stretching his face. Yeah. That looked pretty fucking weird. I yeah. like that. Yeah, cool. <laughs> just as a weird little side note. He did put a lot of effort into those costumes. Yeah. Those masks. It's great. Um, yeah, unsurprisingly, Slipknot Live, still good. Yeah, <laughs> great. Absolutely fantastic. It, actually, the first time I've seen him in 18 years. Wow. It's fucking fantastic. Really good. Uh, it hasn't even been like 18 months for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I've never seen them live. Really? I, I generally, mate, I, I don't know how big you are on Slipknot. I mean, we did the Redfords and you seem to quite enjoy that. If you get the chance, mate, I reckon you should really go see him. Just for the, just for the sake of it, you know what I mean? Like, just for the lols. Just for the lols. Cause, yeah, I think they've become one of those bands especially in the metal alternative music scene where you kind of have to see them. Do you know what I mean? Like you, your legacy bands. Mm -hmm. like everyone should see, everyone at some point should see Metallica and everyone should at some point see, I don't know, the Iron Maiden or something like that. As someone the who's band. had to see Iron Maiden twice, you don't. No. Yeah, simply <laughs> seen Metallica and Iron Maiden. I'd okay, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll change it then to Black Sabbath. Uh, yeah, I, also I can totally that. agree. No, I can agree with that. I've seen them twice and even though they're older shit, Fucking love yeah, it. They're, 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 they're the, the old legacy band. They're the old uniform, whatever. But I think I agree with that. The Slipknot are now that modern era, and I think if you're into this music and you like them, mm. you, you should go see them live. The, the, the show they put on is fucking phenomenal. It's a sensory overload. I feel like I I need to see them again because I just don't feel like I saw everything last night because you just are, your eyes are all over the fucking place, especially. After ten beers, <laughs> so yeah, you're really fighting against yourself yeah. there, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I'm just surprised you remember saw the band. Oh, all right, I had a business meeting this morning at work, and I've actually smashed it. I'm amazed at myself. <laughs> like, oh, were you so so drunk? You thought you smashed it? <laughs> <laughs> I just smashed into the table. <laughs> yeah, just fell asleep at the desk. Oh, yeah. that's my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, good. Fucking slipknot, smashed it, mate. Loved it. Great. 
Can't wait. To see no, him again. Absolutely fantastic. I'm just it's one of the things. If I can't get to not fest because it, it is dear, uh, I'd hope they tour again. But knowing like not, they probably won't. No, if they're doing something like Not Fest, I doubt they're going to tour again, at least in the first They tend to only year. do one album cycle, don't they? they tend to like no, uh, weirdly, the last time they came to the UK, they didn't play Manchester uh, the last time they came, but they did like a weird in-between album store, just a few dates around <laughs> arenas. That was the one which they had suicide tendencies with them. Oh, I remember the 10 minutes ago, but they wouldn't play Manchester, and I was just like, ah, I can't be asked <laughs> Yeah, But that that is quite, that was quite unusual for them. Well, if Slipknot are listening, uh, Leeds has an arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sheffield, not, Sheffield mate it's like a fucking five minutes away it's um, at least ten yeah, okay actually <laughs> put it this way they played Manchester and Sheffield you're perfectly between both of those seats uh, you had no excuse <laughs> I can think of a few we came to Leeds like 50 times last year I know because Leeds rocks shut up man <laughs> speaking of Leeds or Manchester rocking we'll leave Slip not there and everything we're going to move on to the interview with Sean from We Never Learn to Live. Uh, and obviously, if you've heard the podcast before, we will talk about this afterwards. We always ask the question, which you prefer, Leeds or Manchester? We'll find out what he prefers in this interview and we'll find out whether I'm livid or Paul's livid. <laughs> I, I am continuously indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> he does mention Cardiff. We'll he talk does. All that. I, he but, has yeah. a, a so, cheap pop for Cardiff. <laughs> for now, enjoy this interview with the lovely Sean from We Never Learn to Live and we'll catch up with you after the interview. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, I, I haven't got... I'll, I'll stay here. Cool. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, firstly, for doing this. Much appreciated. Thanks, mate. No props. Good, good. All right, I'm just going to start recording on my side. Okay. Uh, I think everything should be good to go. Cool. All uh, right. Uh, yeah, so, uh, to start off with, firstly, how are you doing? I'm very, I'm very well, thank you, mate. It's a uh, wet and windy, blustery day down in uh, otherwise usually sunny Brighton. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, can't complain. All good, my my friend. How are you? Uh, a bit, bit the same, to be fair. A bit bit wet and windy up in Leeds, but uh, can't complain too much. Uh, I have a weekend off, and I have lots of video games to play. <laughs> right, fair enough. Excellent stuff. Yeah. Um, so I just want to crack on with the uh, easy questions. Get those out of the way first. Uh, firstly, uh, how was your twenty nineteen? It was. Uh, it was really good. Um, we released uh, obviously the Sleepwalk Transmissions mm-hmm. uh, in May, and I think we were all like, I think we were all really surprised with the uh, really positive response that it got. Like we knew um, we were we were confident, kind of existing fans w- would would be into it even though it was a, a, a slight sort of progression of the sound but um the amount of kind of new fans and stuff we've picked up has, has been incredible like so we've had so many people coming to shows that are like singing along that hadn't even heard our first record um yeah i was gonna say because i was at the uh the lead show uh, the holy roar all day uh, yeah. and yeah seeing the uh the feedback there uh, that you guys got on stage was uh, fantastic. Uh, so has it been like that pretty much across the board uh, since the album came out then? Yeah, I, th- I think like, um, I mean, we haven't been able to, I'm sure we'll probably touch on this, but um, we haven't obviously been able to tour as much as we would have liked to, mostly, you know, for my personal circumstances, being kind of a year into fatherhood. But mm-hmm. we, we kind of knew that was always going to be the case on, the, on initially after the release. Um but the shows that we have done and the tours that we have done, like, yeah, I think it's kind of been the first time as a band that we've had that kind of like sing along response to songs properly um, at pretty much every show we played, at least kind of like the singles are having like a couple of people sing along down the front, which has mm-hmm. been amazing. Good stuff. I mean, um, I've got to say like talking about like the difference between the two, because obviously this is what, like four years now since the last album. It is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm going to say the. Uh, I'm assuming that the difference is obviously uh, quite, uh, quite well different. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, like, in comparison to the re- the reception to obviously you had uh, silently through them skyward, um, which is the album I got introduced to you guys on. Yeah. Uh, I, like it does seem like it is a bit of a night and day uh, experience in the two. Okay. Uh, like between like the reception I've seen online, uh, like. It does seem like this one has been a, a really good uh, step up for you guys. Uh, would you would you agree with that? 
Yeah, definitely. I think um, for the first time, you know, I'd say one of the benchmarks for us was that like, we, you know, most of the reviews, if not like nearly all of them online have been like overwhelmingly positive. Mm -hmm. Ones that have been negative have have almost kind of been like um, they, they've kind of been like almost anti hype, which is the first time we've ever had even that element thrown at us sort of like oh that's what all the hype is about this band sort of thing and that was the first time we were like oh man like our name's actually obviously getting thrown around there now and, mm -hmm. and people are hearing of us and people are hearing of us a lot that some people feel like in their reviews that they would describe us as having hype which has never even been something that we've ever even thought of experiencing before um and just the sheer amount of kind of like on um like online response in terms of reviews and like people getting in touch on social media, mm -hmm. um, talking about the, the record and loving the record and has, has been hugely different. Yeah. Um, so it's been, it's been amazing because obviously after four years, we, you know, we were obviously a little bit worried thinking, oh, people, people would probably just forgotten about us a little bit. And you'd see before we released the record, you sort of think like occasionally people were like, yeah, what, what is, those guys even still going. I kind of thought they might have broken up or something. Um, and behind closed doors, we were obviously working quite hard on the record. But um, so we were we were really really happy to release it, and then even happier to see that it had sort of immediately picked up um, this whole new kind of following, which is which is really really great. Yeah, I was going to say, was it something you'd expected uh, prior to the album coming out, or was it a bit of a shock for you guys? No, not no, not at all. I mean, to be honest, like we kind of just thought we knew we know that we have a kind of like quite loyal um, but relatively small following, um, and we just kind of I think we we hoped obviously due to the nature of the songs we hoped it would kind of reach like a new audience. Mm -hmm. I think in the back of our minds, we were just really happy to be releasing new music and, and excited to be playing new songs. Um, and we didn't really think or hope too much about like, oh, hope, you know, really hope this is going to get like way more fans involved or way more kind of um, of an online presence in terms of uh, press and things like that. So it was it was genuinely like a, a really big, pleasant surprise for us. Cool. Uh, I would say, yeah, it's always nice to just get music out there, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, especially after four years, then like mm. some of these songs, you know, had kind of actually been in 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 the back pocket for quite a long time. So even when we were playing shows, you know, say like two years after the silently after silently was released, you know, we had the, the starts of some of these new songs in the back pocket, and to be sitting on them for that long, just being like, oh my god, like we cannot wait to play some of these songs live. Like Lumen on Luma was one of the first kind of songs we we started. It had gone through iterations, but like the the basis of the song was there for easily about two years, mm -hmm. and so sitting on that, being like, "Oh, like we cannot wait to play this live because it was just so much pacier and exciting at the time to some of the more you know the longer songs that we were playing from the silent era." Yeah, and I was going to say, just touching on that, what you mentioned there previously, like you mentioned, that obviously, uh, like you've you've been writing these for a few years. What was the process like for writing this album, like in comparison to like the previous one, or just in general? What is your process as a band? Well, so I think part of the reason why the Sleepwalk Transmissions, you know, took four years was that um, on the back of Silently, essentially the writing process kind of did change quite a lot. So. Um, in silently like all of the songs pretty much faithfully are based on uh, recordings of improvised jams so at the start of each rehearsal we would normally just kind of as we're sound as we're sort of like getting our levels and stuff it would normally kind of just like bleed into this like uh jam that we pretty much just like the start of every rehearsal we would just kind of like push record on a voice memo app on iphone mm -hmm. um and these jams would kind of turn into songs as we were playing them, really. We'd put all those in a drop box and then we'd just kind of revisit them and essentially the best eight of those turn into silently. So when it came to album two, we still had like loads of these like like really good kind of like jam improvised songs that we started working on. 
Um, and for a long time, we were just kind of going through those, be like, okay, well, maybe we should work on this one. Maybe. And it kind of, for about, a, you know, the first year or two, a lot of those, it just kind of felt like it wasn't really grabbing us in the same way, or it just sort of felt like somehow we were just releasing silently part two, and it was all just kind of feeling a bit like formulaic and st- and I don't know. So um, this time around, uh, Brett, our guitarist, for the first time had started kind of like, you know, re- recording and writing ideas at at home and sometimes with second guitar parts or bass parts and stuff mm-hmm. and, and bringing more of a kind of skeleton of a song to rehearsals and we'd work on those, um, which is how a lot of other bands do it. They'll often have a kind of like, you know, lead songwriter, if yeah. you like, and bring that. Um, so that, that that was kind of roughly how more of the Sleepwalk Transmission songs came about. Um, there are still some on there that are kind of hangovers from uh, the sleep from the sort of silently type writing era and that type of process. But most of them this time around were kind of Brett, our guitarist, by and large, um, kind of bringing skeletons or basic ideas of songs to rehearsals and then we would kind of work on them as a band. But we, we, generally our writing process is like super democratic. I mean, like we've all been friends and in a band together for, you know, some of us like eight, nine, ten years. Mm-hmm. So... Um, we are we, we're all very well gelled together as musicians and friends and our writing process is very much kind of like all of us just kind of bouncing ideas off each other um it's not it's never been a case of someone being like right like this is my song like you play that part you play that part it's kind of we're all kind of just gelling it and feeling it out as it goes yeah that sounds good i mean and i'm assuming obviously with brett when he's writing he's obviously got ideas in mind that he knows that you guys are going to like and will be able to work with so yeah um, yeah, exactly. yeah, and it's big gives you like a nice little structure to work with in, in the beginning. Yeah, well, I think, and that was why this time, those songs kind of the songs on this record have more of that kind of structured feel. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't something that we kind of thought like, right, we want to start doing verses and choruses, uh, but just the way that his ideas were coming to the forefront instead of us just instead of us sort of being like, okay, why don't we do that section, that section, then we go to a C, then D, then E. It was just like those two sections are so good. Like, why would we not, like, why would we not just want to go back to them and listen to them a second, third time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, which was really nice and, and really nice for me as a vocalist because it meant that I could like, you know, actually, actually write kind of chorus melodies and write verse melodies, which I really, really enjoyed doing, which didn't, I didn't really get a chance to in the same way on silently. I'm going to say, what is your, like, vo- like your vocal writing process? Because I know, lo- like, looking through some of the vocals, there's a lot of, like, uh, sci-fi influences in there. Uh, I noticed in uh, an interview you guys have done in the past, you mentioned um, taking ideas from, like, Philip K. Dick stories and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in terms of, like, um, vocal writing, the way it normally goes is that, like, I, I won't I won't normally pen any any lyrics sort of in advance to be honest like when when we start working on a new song i'll pretty much just like in in the moment just kind of be like singing i'll I'll just kind of feel out melodies and kind of sing gibberish and not or just kind of be singing words as almost like a stream of consciousness thing at the time Mm -hmm. um that then when we go back to when or when i go back to listen to recordings of those kind of work in progress songs i'll start to kind of like pick out certain like uh uh phrases or or rhymes that i feel like are, are working and then i'll start to kind of write lyric, lyrics into that if you like so i'm almost doing it in a, in a reverse way like rather than i don't have a notepad at home where i'm constantly sort of penning lyrics i'm more just kind of like feeling out melodies and rhythms at the time in the moment that we're writing and then i kind of write the words to fit that um but in terms of the like the sci-fi influence that you're talking about, like, yeah, absolutely. Like I'm, I'm an absolutely huge, like avid sci-fi reader nerd. Um, I try to stray from the path in right in like reading other genres, but just like nothing grips me as, as much as sci-fi does. So, um, for la- especially the last couple of years, I've just been like constantly reading loads of different sci-fi authors. Um, any, any big influences at the moment, like recently? Uh, well, I just—I literally just finished reading um, 
a book called The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by uh, Robert Heinlein. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, but he's the guy that uh, wrote Starship Troopers. Oh, okay. Obviously, you, like the Starship Troopers film that we know, I, I haven't read the book. I imagine the book is quite a lot different because mm. uh, Starship Troopers is almost a bit like, it's, it's almost a bit comedic if I remember it properly. Yeah, it's a bit of a social parody. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. But... Um, so yeah, this this book was is essentially about like uh, it's kind of like based like forty years in the future where the the moon is essentially like a penal colony where they send uh, convicts, uh, but now they've decided that they want a revolution. They want to become their own like the moon wants to become its own nation. So it is quite interesting. The whole thing is orchestrated by this like supercomputer um, that basically has learned to become essentially human but has control of like absolutely everything so but yeah it was a good read <laughs> yeah, sounds good but, uh, yeah I, I, I just I, I really enjoy it and I, and I felt like um for I've always kind of had that sci-fi influence to my writing but on sleepwalk transmissions I felt like it was a really nice chance for me to actually kind of step away from lyrics being as self-centered if you like and write kind of a bit more fictionally and metaphorically which i've never really done before and i really really enjoyed it i was gonna say like how did you find that in comparison to writing from like personal experience kind of stuff it was a different i think it's just a different era in my life like at the time of um silently you know I've, i was really sort of wrestling with with quite a lot like emotionally and mentally mm-hmm. and um the music that we were playing at that time was very much like a sort of cathartic therapy for me if you like it was like a chance for me to just like i felt like i was really getting a lot more out um and so the lyrics and and metaphors naturally were kind of like a lot more kind of inwardly looking if you like um which was really healthy and really good for me at the time um but you know now four years on from that record i'm kind of in a different like more stable place in myself i've kind of like put a lot of uh demons to bed if you like and i've kind of moved on from a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. so it would have been completely it would have been completely false um for me to kind of try and write like that again because i would have just been kind of like parodying or or faking my own emotions which would which just wouldn't have been right um and i never wanted to be one of those vocalists that is just like that you know that the whole the whole usp is me just like being completely miserable on stage because when when i was completely miserable on stage and it was really healthy at that point that it was great but I, i i didn't want to be you know forcing myself to dig up constant bad memories for uh, when, the rest of his career that, yeah that makes sense like when you've got like a when you need an outlet it's good to have it but when you don't need it it, it can come across as a bit uh not false but like uh not as uh not as genuine as it were well yeah exactly you can see through it like i've seen i've seen through but you know you see it when you see vocalists on stage playing kind of music like that and mm-hmm. you can tell when they're they're doing it for the sound of the music rather than they're doing it because they, they they sort of actually kind of really got something to share sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a really healthy progression for me, like musically to, in a, in a sense to step away from, to, from digging up that kind of stuff. Well, that makes sense. That's cool. Um, I mean, talking like going back to like music in general, like one of the things we've mentioned on the podcast a few times is obviously uh, you guys not so much like looking back, but you kind of like have a bit of a throwback to like the older like post hardcore bands. Yeah. Uh, so I know you obviously you guys do a Poison the Well cover quite so pretty regularly when you play live. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's uh, we've mentioned a few times that those we can we kind of pick out those influences like is that a conscious effort for you guys like to kind of stick to that well not stick to that genre but like work in that kind of genre or is it just like a natural thing from like tastes and stuff yeah i mean i mean definitely the latter like all of us i think we all started playing music together you know like i said like eight nine years ago with with those sorts of bands being our favorite bands um and I think by and large, I mean, me personally, I'm still just kind of musically with stuff I'm listening to. I'm, I'm still just kind of stuck in, in, in that era. Like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll check out new bands. Um, 
and I enjoy checking out new bands, but more often than not, I'm just like, you know, putting on some of my favorite records from, from that era, you know, like Alex on fire, yeah. still yeah. listening to like, I'm still listening to hundred reasons all the time. I'm still listening to like Ruben all the time. Um, have you got, got my playlists? What's going on here? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's, um, I, just, I just can't help myself. I think it's, it's probably quite natural for a lot of people. It's like when you're in at that sort of point in your life when that music is speaking to you, it's just like it's always going to have that kind of gravitas, isn't it? Yeah, when something kind of like inspires you to start a band in the first place, it's quite easy to like, yeah, have those influences in there. Yeah, uh, exactly. I think we, uh, yeah, we just all. We, we all share very similar taste yeah. and so naturally it just has been sort of coming out and i write and we enjoy we enjoy that type of writing cool um i mean just talking about like obviously you mentioned briefly near the beginning that obviously you've not told as much as you wanted to uh yeah. i know obviously i think you mentioned that, that you'd uh you recently had a child yeah uh, i know that uh, one of you guys is obviously in other bands as well i think uh, is he guitarists in earth moves it's our um, our bassist, oh, bassist. And, and our and our drummer. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. so like, how's that been? Like, obviously, I know because obviously, you, with the conflicting like plans and stuff, like, has it been hard trying to play as much as you wanted to in twenty nineteen? It's kind of been um, in twenty nineteen in particular. Uh, so when the album came out, we you know we we've been offered. A, to be honest like a lot of tours mm-hmm. and some really good tours that have been absolutely devastatingly gutted to to say sorry we we just can't do it and and more often than not that's down to me like i'm self-employed mm-hmm. um and so you know essentially i don't i don't get like holiday the rest of the guys are in sort of full-time jobs um i don't get holiday allowances so if i don't work i don't earn mm-hmm. and you know, two years ago, that wouldn't have been a problem. I'd just be like, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll live off, I'll live off beans for a couple of weeks. Like, yeah. that's fine. Um, but now that I've, you know, I've got like both my wife and my daughter, depending on me financially, it's more difficult for me to, to make some of those tours work, especially the kind of like two, you know, the two weekers or three weekers. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been difficult. So we kind of, you know, we, but everyone knew it in the band going into releasing this record um, and our booking agent as well, that that was kind of for at least 2019. That was kind of just where we were going to be. Um, and we would just have to play as much as we, as much as we could, but sort of long tours wouldn't be possible. Um, but come next year, you know, we're now a plan in place. We've got, we've got like a lot of festivals already confirmed on the scene. We've got like, we're going to be, already for 2020 in terms of the confirmed shows that we've got i don't know how many i can actually like announce at this point but um we're looking we're we're looking like way busier for next year than this year and the the kind of way we're going to go about doing that is kind of like essentially just like loads and loads of pockets of kind of like long weekends and the odd tour here and there so we'll just focus on getting to as many sort of different areas of the country as possible um which is kind of the best happy medium that, that, that works for us as a band for the moment. Cause I just think for doing, doing proper, like two, two or three week runs just isn't, isn't going to be feasible for me at the moment financially. No, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, obviously we're, we're all uh, getting older and we've got uh, our priorities, but uh, no, it's just, it is good that you guys are obviously planning to do as much as possible. Cause uh, yeah. I think we mentioned it a few times that we, we love seeing you guys. Um, so yeah, any chance we can do yeah. that. Great. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, I know. We, and we love playing as well. It's something that it's never something that you know turning down tours is an absolutely gut wrenching thing for me because I absolutely love doing it. Yeah. Love playing shows with the guys and my you know my family and my wife are so completely supportive. If it, if it was up to her, she's just always like, just do it. You should do it. You should do it. But I just know that I've you know I would I would do it and then essentially bankrupt my family. So it. I, at the level that we're at, it, you just can't really make those calls. We know we're not going to be the next, like you know, top top forty album sellout O2 arena band. Um, so it's finding a, it's finding a way that makes that work for us. And I think we've kind of nailed that for next year. So we'll we'll be very very busy, but in a more kind of like organized structured way that can work around it. Yeah, that happy medium. Well. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. cool um i'm gonna say uh talking about uh, obviously you mentioned like 
agreements with booking agents and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've been following for a while is uh, Holy Raw. Um, yeah. So, like, what's it been like working with them? Obviously, because I know like a lot of labels are a bit funny about like people taking time off and not touring enough and stuff like that. But from what I get from that label, they are pretty understanding with all their bands and they're pretty like pretty good. Uh, has that been a good experience for you guys so far? I think, yeah. I, th- I mean, I think Holy Raw have to be honest, like they've never, you know, they've just been nothing but understanding and supportive. I think they understand that, you know, most of the bands on their roster are, 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 are passionate musicians doing it for the love of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, you know, playing, you know, essentially alternative underground music. And so they, yeah, they, they, they've been totally supportive of us. They've never pressured us to, you know, they've never been hounding us during that gap between silently and, and sleep wall transmissions. They haven't been like, when's our next record coming out? Like, we need to get that next release. It's always just been like, we've been leading it to them and sort of like, right, we're writing, like, here's some demos. We'll, and they've always been like, sounds amazing. Like, looking forward to hearing more. But, um, and the same with touring, you know, they like, they've kind of just, they know for us, we'll do, we'll do everything we can. Um, but no, they, they've been nothing but, extremely like supportive for us which has been amazing because other labels probably would put more pressure on on the band because which is understandable like i totally understand for them it's like you know they want to they want to see us on the road as much as much as possible um out there selling records and and promoting the the label um but they also understand that this you know it's not it's not possible for bands like us to constantly be on the road all the time so um They'll just, you know, they just support us where where they can, and it's yeah, it's brilliant. That's fantastic. Yeah, I've heard some uh, horror stories about some labels, so it's always good to find a good one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they, I mean they they they're so they're just so on the money. Those guys, they work they work so hard, and mm-hmm. they know um, just how to treat bands right. They, there's never any pressure in in any regard for from Holy Raw to to do it this way or that way. They just know whatever works for us will work for us, and we'll do we'll do everything we can. Cool. Uh, I think last thing to say then is obviously 2020 now. Uh, is there any plans that you can talk about? Um, I know. Obviously, you say it's going to be a big year for you guys for like trying to yeah. as much. I think basically, I think this I think this interview was timed about a week too early or something because I know we've be, we've got um, already like in a, a sort of dozens of shows sort of. <laughs> Um, uh, for 2020 mm-hmm. um, the only one I, I think right now that I can actually talk about is we're doing a, a, a headline show in Luton on the 7th of Feb um, so which is nice because we've never been sort of that Midlands kind of area before so hopefully we get sort of a bit of Milton Keynes sort of crowd coming down for it um, we've got lots of festivals confirmed um, for the summer which we're really excited about but again it's sort of strict, a strict lid on that no, of course but like I say, we're just uh, we've started writing for the next record already, so we've got some really exciting songs uh, that I'm again now really really excited to start sort of playing and and um, honing over the next uh, couple of months and year. But um, yeah, nothing too much, I'm afraid, that I can officially confirm. Other than uh, for anyone out there that hasn't seen us uh, because we haven't made it to your pocket of the UK yet. Uh, we will definitely be there in, in, in 2020. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and then, yeah, just to wrap up, a uh, couple of quick fire questions, if that's okay. Sure, uh, sure. So, uh, first gig memory. What's the first big gig you remember going to? Uh, oh, go, well, as a punter? Yes. Um, oh, man, my first ever proper gig was, um, it was like a, so I was, I was born and brought up in Cardiff. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first proper show was this sort of like, one day festival thing they did at cardiff castle uh and it was green day headlining it wow yeah we had green day iggy pop um a hundred reasons sponge uh and a bunch of others i can't really remember but that was amazing it was the first one it was my first ever show that i've probably gone to i've gone with a mate i was about 11 or 12 maybe i've just started playing bass guitar in my first band um was about to play my first show with my first band in cardiff barfly and uh yeah it was absolutely amazing like i absolutely loved it it was was a huge i was more than anything excited to see 100 reasons because i was an absolute fanboy at that point um 
And yeah, it was an incredible day. Awesome. Uh, first album you remember buying? Um, I mean, if I'm being t- <laughs> if I'm being like ruthlessly honest, yeah. I would actually probably say like Spice Girls, and I was like four. Um, but if I'm you know, if you if you're going to be kind and edit that out, I'd probably say uh, <laughs> Echo Park by Feeder. Okay, um, I'll, I'll tell people uh, it was Echo Park, but I'm totally, <laughs> totally yeah. Them know it's uh, Spice Girls. <laughs> uh, and then uh, first band T-shirt you remember buying? Um, it was a Green Day T-shirt. Ducky, it was the Ducky album cover by Green Day. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think we already know the answer because you've just told us. But what would be the most surprising song on your playlist? <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's definitely not Spice Girls. <laughs> the most surprising song on my playlist. Um, I'm absolutely, I'm obsessed with um, House Plants by Squid at the moment. Okay. It's, okay. Uh, the weirdest fucking song I've ever heard. And it's amazing. Yeah, I, I love it. It's sort of punky, but yeah, real curveball. Cool. Uh, a couple more then. Uh, what would you do if you weren't in a band? I would probably be a gardener or something outdoorsy. I wish I did something more outdoorsy with my day-to-day life. So yeah, I'd have to be like a gardener or a you know, landscape or a lumberjack or some shit. Nice. Uh, then last question, the most important question. Leeds or Manchester? Leeds, mate. Good answer. Every time, yeah. Great answer. Badger's going to be so upset. <laughs> mate, I, I, mate, I love, I love Leeds. I, and genuinely, like, it's not, it's not beyond the realm of possibility that I might move to Leeds in, in the, you know, medium term future. Uh, because in my line of work, there is kind of work for me there, and my wife is from yorkshire and i just i absolutely love leeds so yeah no no question fantastic choice <laughs> well <laughs> yeah. on that note man uh thank you very much for joining me i much appreciate yeah. it um for anyone out there who's not heard you guys before where can they find you online uh, you can find us on facebook um we never learn to live just all the usual spotify um band camp but uh instagram i run the instagram account so uh, if you're into instagram you know follow us on the uh, WNLTL, and uh, we'll, we'll have a chat on there. Awesome. Awesome. Brilliant Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time, man. Much appreciated. Okay, mate. Take care. Adieu. Bye. Bye. And that was it. That was the interview with Sean from We Never Learn to Live. What a fucking lovely man. What a nice chat. Yeah. Leads, leads, leads. <laughs> right. That's two for two now. I'm fucking living. To be fair, I'm rooting for leads because I, I feel like it'll always annoy you more than it would ever annoy Paul. So <laughs> I'm really I I'm wondering if we've got the ever the chance to interview a band from another country, if they would also say Leeds. I wonder if it's just a UK thing. Well if turn around we're like, what the fuck's a Leeds? Yeah. <laughs> I mean if they're a hardcore band, they'd probably definitely know what Leeds yeah, is. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. But it maybe like I, I don't know, I feel like Manchester's might be a bit more I think I was thinking this the other day after this because I was living for like half an hour. And I thought about it. I was like, is Manchester maybe too touristy for British people? <laughs> um, and Leeds is like more not so. I don't know. Uh, I think it's just genuinely good in comparison. <laughs> All right. I mean, you get more gigs than us, apparently. But... Yeah, because it's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Went to Cardiff. You got a little Cardiff there. Yeah, he played the. What was it? Uh, Blue... Did he say his first ever gig was at the bar play? No, he pl- yeah, he played a gig at a bar play. Yeah. yeah. Fucking awful, then. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just, it got taken over a few times as well. After it was, it was called bogeys at one point. Terrible. Just you know, when you go to a small gig uh, venue and it's like it's fine if it's a quiet gig. If it's busy, you'll just somehow find a pillar yeah. at all points, which you're stuck behind. <laughs> it say, it say his first gig he went to was uh, like, Cardiff Castle, Green Day. Cardiff Castle, the castle in Cardiff. Yeah, I can't imagine a gig being in there. I've been in that castle. <laughs> it's Green Day. Yeah, no, but I can't imagine how they set that up. I've yeah, been I've, it's I've, weird. I've never been seen a gig at Cardiff Castle, so yeah. I could not tell you. Unless they use the uh, sort of the park behind I it. I kind of wish I got to speak to him because I went to a show where it was Green Day, No Doubt, uh, Incubus, Hooperstank, A, and it sounds like a very, if not identical I mean, lineup. Out of them, I remember him saying A was there. <laughs> he, said, he said A, Green Day, somebody else. The only one he didn't have, I think, was No Doubt. Right. And I wonder if it was the same show, but in Cardiff. I thought it was just a one-off Manchester thing, but maybe it wasn't. 
No. I, could, but, but, I mean, first of all... Also, spy skills. <laughs> yeah, first of all, thank you very much for, for chatting to us, chatting to Paul. Um, talked Cheers. in depth. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah. Talked in depth about um, the, the you know a lovely background to his writing techniques with the bands and what's coming up and you know dealing with sort of life in the music and and then life at home. Yeah. But fuck all that. <laughs> the best part was learning the true <laughs> honesty with what was the first record you bought. <laughs> I appreciate that honesty so much. <laughs> I like the fact that you said edit that out. No, I hope you knew full well that I was never going to edit. That oh, out. Of course no. not. <laughs> never going to. Hey, Sorry, Sean. So, uh, you know, Sean, for me, I'll give you a pass for that, mate, because to be honest with you, I had a Spice Girls album as well. <laughs> you don't so. get a pass. You, you, you honestly, you get like I, you hear it all the time on the uh, interviews where s- someone will always say like, the, "Oh, Metallica, the Black Album." It's like, fuck off. It was like Baja Men or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> what was your first albums you bought? Uh, weirdly, okay, like so, I have no idea of like the order in mm-hmm. the the initial three. But one of them was uh, Echo Park by Feeder, which mm. was also sort of Shaw's other offering. Uh, that was also one of mine. I remember I had the first Slip, uh, slip not I want to say, Sum 41 album, the Half Hour of Power. Mm-hmm. And then I remember... Terrible. Uh, <laughs> I remember Dookie as well that time by Green Day. I mean, I try- these are all fine. These are all boring. Yeah. That's what I expected from you. I, know, I wish I don't... I can tell you what my first single was. Go on. 100% my first single was Will Smith Men in Black. Awesome. Yeah, right? Nice. Yeah. Uh, I think the first album... So, my first CD album I remember owning was like a now 40, whatever the fuck. Oh, see, because I had them, they but count. they were they bought for me. I didn't go out my way and choose to <sighs> buy them. I can't remember the first... The first album I must have gone out and bought... I guess it would have been like Corn or something, maybe Offspring. Yeah. Something like that. Just because I didn't really buy music until I got into alternative music. Yeah. Well, I had an older sister who I just pinched anything yeah, she'd I mean, have yeah, as well. I'd hold a, so I'd hold I was a bit... Dropped off him, yeah. yeah, so I was a bit later on when I started buying my own things. But Napster. <laughs> fuck you, Metallica. Yeah, I didn't... I never used Napster. I was... Uh, I, I infected my family computer with LimeWire instead. <laughs> yeah, you oh, yeah. guys are boring. I bought PJ and Duncan. <laughs> oh, you beautiful bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because you were ready to rumble? Did you buy yeah, I was always ready to rumble. <laughs> Did you buy that because you love PJ and Duncan or because it was a slight wrestling reference no I loved it because I love PJ and Duncan at the time do, do you remember Good any thing. other highlights on that album uh no I don't <laughs> but I can look them up <laughs> give me some deep cuts PJ and Duncan we are like look I know what you're thinking but track four is a fucking tune next, I mean, <laughs> next week uh, PJ and Duncan retrospective please <laughs> <laughs> obviously let's get ready to rumble being the big one of course um oh my god so many weird ones. Free as a bird. What the hell? You know what? Like we're nearly at a year of doing this podcast, and never in my days where I thought we'd talk about PJ and Duncan. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this is why I've been. This has been my angle. <laughs> we're not, not doing a retrospective game. all of a sudden, but just quickly. Did you know there were six singles from that album? <laughs> oh, I mean, it's a pop album, isn't it? So yeah, not surprising. That's what. Yeah. That shit. But that was my first singles. album that I remember buying, and then uh, the first single I bought was uh, Jamiroquai's "Deep Underground." From oh my god, mate! Oh, yeah. Fantastic. I, that. I think yeah. I did. Oh my brother did. So the first alternative album I remember buying is um, uh, is it Incesticide by Nirvana? Mm. Yeah, good shout. Yeah, I can't remember. I really wish I could remember the first time I physically bought. I, so, I rubbed so many off my brother. Just kind yeah, of that's it. I've, I've just got a miscellaneous collection. I remember at one point my sister basically making me get the Evanescence album. That was a sad time. <laughs> oh, that's a sad time. Because <laughs> I never liked them, but she, she had a lot of control over me. <laughs> we did not get into them because that sick Daredevil film. God knows. <laughs> no, definitely not. That Daredevil was... film made me sick. That's <laughs> what you mean. Did it not wake you up inside? No, oh, maybe we want to die a little. Yeah. Fucking dreadful. Anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> and that's it for this week, yeah? Happy? Yeah. yeah. Within right, reason. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for listening, guys. Uh, and again, a massive thank you to Sean from We Never Learned to Give uh, coming on and having a chat with us. If, as I said, uh, oh, that was it. I remember the thing I was going to say. He mentioned about playing a festival. They're now they're booked for a festival this year and he couldn't say what it was. So you're home for 2003. It's going to be 2003. <laughs> Surely. Is that our Arctogen? Yes. Uh, it's one of those two, I think. If I'm wrong, what's new? Um, 
So anyway, thank you very much, man. If you've not yet listened to We Never Listen, please go and check out last album, Sleep and Trans- Sleepwalk Transmission. It's fucking fantastic. Amazing. It, album. it was someone's album of the year. I don't know who. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you very much, Sean. Cracking bloke. Uh, thank you all as well for listening. We appreciate you all for taking your time out of your life to actually listen to this shit. Except for the interview, which you. is great. The rest of it was all drivel. But thanks. Douche. That's what we're good at. Yeah. Uh, if you want to help us out for free, cost you out, mate. Follow us on Twitter, Loud Noises Pod UK. Give our Facebook page a like. Just search Loud Noises Podcast. It'll probably be there. We just want nothing but your love. Yeah. Mm. Or if you have an iPhone and the ability to leave us an iTunes review, please do so. It helps us in the algorithm. And also, we have a YouTube channel now. YouTube. Thanks, images. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Had to do something useful, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> the link is still on letters and numbers, so just look for Loud Noises Podcast. I'm sure the videos will pop up. I had I had luck on that. We need to get a hundred subscribers to be able to get a custom URL. Okay, subscribe so. to our YouTube channel so we can get a custom URL so I can plug it better on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Which you've already listened to, so you probably didn't need to if you're on YouTube already. <laughs> Thank you very much, for listening guys. Back next week with a Petrol Girls. Oh yeah, live. We're going to see Petrol Girls tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and have you got anything, Paul? Uh, well, I was going to take like some time off and maybe go see uh, while she sleeps and every time I die. Oh, but that's after we next record. Is it? I thought we were recording on the day. Yeah, but still. Oh, yeah, after. no, of course it is. <laughs> I am. That's how time works. I mean, we can record it after the gig you, if you want, but I don't think you'll want to be around me and Badger after that gig. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if I want to be around you beforehand. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's fair. fair. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, this week, no, it's my birthday, so I'm having a week yeah. off of doing anything. Happy birthday. Thanks, mate. You bastard. That, that was unnecessary. Just a happy <laughs> birthday for me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> If you okay. send Paul some birthday love on Twitter or Facebook, Sweet, I've already given nasty the links. birthday love. Send him yeah. a donut. Send him a donut. Yeah. Oh, I do love donuts. <laughs> From Temple Donuts in Leeds. Yes, I'm going to go to Temple's this week. That's cool. what I'm doing this week. Actually, can we put an order in now since we're going to be recording in the same room? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bring us, Bring us I Temple am, Donuts. I am not. They will not survive the train journey over. Oh. I'll take the risk. I, <laughs> Bring us temper donuts or get diabetes. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Anyway, thank you very much, everyone. See you next time. Till next time. In a bit. In a bit. Douche. Douche. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>